The following is a presentation of Stewed Productions. This is Landon with Farm Boy Brew Shop celebrating four years and our four year anniversary, and you are listening to Inner Brews. This is Interbrews. Well, congratulations on four years. Thank you. It uh, it seems like it hasn't been that long. No, it seems like just yesterday that we were uh, the the bank was giving us money and we were open. <laughs> <laughs> it went so fast, but definitely four years has gone fast too. And I'll say I've learned a lot in that short amount of time. Yeah, what was that? I don't did know. Something over there. Something. Over, did some, do I have something that makes noise? Oh, I think it was the uh, refrigerator. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I should be used to that by now. I, I have a keyser that I'm still not done building out yet, Ooh. but I've got it in the I've got it in the studio at home. And uh, every time it comes on, the lights flicker. That might not. We were talking electric before the show started. Oh, by the way, I'm Josh, your host, Mike, TD Mike yeah. here. And, of course, uh, Landon. Landon, owner, proprietor, um, guru of homebrew. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Um, that guy. What else would you? What, that, are, what other titles? That beer guy. Veteran That's, of. Yeah. Veteran homebrewer. Store ownership. Yeah. Multi location. Salesperson. Sales. Chief janitor. Child care. With lots of child care. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Decorator. <laughs> Some of the decorating. Yeah. My, my wife takes over most of the decoration. She's, uh, I put stuff places and then she moves it. Yeah. So I, I call it a joint effort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's done. You can tell. <laughs> and I'm saying, and I'm saying it in the best way possible, being a married man, knowing that I would have never thought of that. And I and I'm like, I'll project that onto Landon as well. He would have known that that's a that's a lady's touch right there. Yeah. So it looks good. Looks Definitely. good as always. She's she's the reason this place isn't so dusty. Yeah. 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 That's a homebrew store. I'm sure that's you fight that every day. Oh yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Of course I grew up in the middle of a wheat field, so the dust really doesn't bother me too much. Mm-hmm. But some people it does, you know. They're... Where did you grow up? Yeah, we've talked about this before. Yeah, so I grew up in West Texas, that's way it. up uh, about an hour north of Abilene. There's a little bitty town called Knox City. Okay. Yep. Not even a thousand people there. Unless the oil field's doing well and mm-hmm. then maybe it's eleven, twelve hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Abilene. Abilene's a good song. Abilene. And they have some breweries there now. They do. They've got like three, mm-hmm. three breweries. I've visited one. I have not been to any of them because I'm always going through at weird, odd hours yes. with kids. So yeah, it's and they're tough not to open. stop. But yeah, and they're not open all the time. But uh, Sock Dolliger or Sock, I don't know how Sock Dolliger. Sock Dolliger or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something I, like that. It, I don't yeah. know the proper pronunciation. I think we've had one of those guys on Liquid Lunch. Really cool guys. I had their IPA. I got a, a growler full of it. And like we were there for a, with the kids with the gymnastics tournament. And so I ran in. They were only open for another like 30 minutes. It was late. And I got it. We went right back to the hotel. We had to be up early. And my wife's like, I don't want any. She loves IPAs. She's like, I don't want any beer right now. So I sat there and tried to drink the whole growler full. Try or did you? I tried. I I got about two thirds of the way through it. And That's I was pretty like, good. Not bad. Not bad I, it was just, I had to sit there in the dark in a hotel room. With know. the TV really, really low volume. I, it was just my phone. Oh. It was just me in one of the, in like, you know, how they kind of have the desk there sometimes. Yeah. And I was in the chair. And I was like, this isn't really comfortable. I want to lay down. But you can't, I don't like laying in bed and drinking beer. How, yeah, how, it's kind of weird. It is how weird. do you do that? It's what? Straw. Okay. Well, see, even sitting up in bed, there's something about a beer in bed that doesn't seem right. No. Shower's okay. Shower, yes. Absolutely. Shower beer. It's cool. Right yeah. after you mow? You don't, you don't do shower beers? Dude, you've missed out. That yeah. look on your face tells it all right there. You drink a, like, like, before no, the like, water is hitting you, or no, like wa- like you know, there's a spot where you put your shampoo and everything. Yeah. It's a perfect so you're, beer, so you're, beer you're holder. In yeah. the shower. Yeah. Oh yeah, with water running. Yeah, yeah. never Here, done that. You should try it. Here's never. what you do: mow the yard. Right. Typically, it's hot, but then you know you hose off a little bit before you go inside because I don't know about y'all, but my get the sh- scrapes off, get the scraps off. Yeah, just yeah. all the, the the yeah the big big clippings. Sure, sure, and the mud. I throw a lot of mud when I do my weed. Yeah, you did yours in the rain yesterday. I did. Or between great. showers, you said. Yeah, I ran yeah. out there, but it felt good. <laughs> anyway, sorry, go ahead. I didn't sweat at all. I was like, ooh, this is nice. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so then you hose that off a little bit, but you're still super hot, right? You cool down a little bit, and you sit outside and drink a beer or two. But then you go in, and when you get your shower, that hot water hits your back, you know, because you, you can turn around in the shower. Uh huh. I, I just feel I don't know where your shower skills are. You've not showered beard. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at taking a shower. Well, are you? 
It sounds like I, it sounds like you're missing something. I mean, you're, you're still, you're sounds like you're, you're kind of basic. And, 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 and you would think, I mean, yeah, it's hot, so you want a cooler shower. So the no, 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 hot. no. Go and with a hot shower. Steams up your beer and gets nah, it hot. You're doing it wrong. If you're taking no, like I've a 45 minute shower, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe usually the beer doesn't last that long. No. Nah. <laughs> you get the hot on the back and the cold in the, down the gullet. Never done that. Never yeah. done that. Well, nice. my my wife did look at me like I was crazy. We were, we were on vacation. And I, had, I guess we, we might have been in a hotel, and yeah. I'd, I, we, I, we had grabbed up a, a grabbed a six pack of beer, and I grabbed one. She was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm gonna have a shower beer because mm-hmm. we're on vacation. We can do that." Mm-hmm. She's like, "What?" I said, "Shower beer. You just you drink it in the shower." She's like, "You're you're Never weird." That. Yeah, that's I that <laughs> it's it's like think about that's like prolonging my shower. I want to take the shower and get out, relax, and then drink because beer. you haven't gone to top notch showers yet. It's really multitasking when mm-hmm. you think about it. it so, is. so like you're, say you're trying to go somewhere, like you've got an Uber coming to pick you up to take you to a party or something. You're like, yeah, I want a beer or two, yeah. but I really don't have time to sit down and have a beer or two because I still have to, I don't want to be the stinky one at the party. Right. So you're like, oh, well, why don't I take a shower and have a beer at the same time? Mm-hmm. And then you get two things knocked out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, I've never heard of that. No. Never. never. Well, what do you, after the show, let's find well, a shower. Well, it's not, it's not hot anymore it doesn't I mean, have to be well hot. maybe in a few days actually when it again. when it's cool outside a hot shower is nice and then you still get the same it's a different effect but it's nice it's nice it's it's still a beer do y'all yeah. drink it y'all drink out a pint glass a beer can no, no beer usually a can can, can or can? bottle yeah yeah okay you don't yeah. want soap in your beer no you don't <laughs> you can still get soap in the beer <laughs> yeah but a can's like a little close a little more closed off yeah i mean you have okay. to really fumble it and don't wash you know don't grab the soap before you drink the beer yeah just let the water hit you. It's also a safety <laughs> thing too. I mean, you don't want a glass. That's you know, true. I mean, can, your yeah. your hands are wet and soapy. So yeah. a can is the ultimate. Can is, I would say, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Isn't there? A, there's a photo going around of one of these uh, new uh, beer hotel things, mm-hmm. yeah. and they have a fridge. They have a mini fridge that's in the shower. So you yeah, can, yeah, that's yeah, where I've you can reach in and grab a beer. Hmm. Yeah. What? Oh, now beer fridge is too much for you? No, I just wonder <laughs> how they keep the shower uh, beer fridge. Yeah, I wonder how they keep the the mold build up down because you got cold and hot and it's going to be clean a weird... it clean it well yeah but hotels are good for about a year and a half and it's like i don't want to stay there anymore <laughs> there's been too many people in there i mean you'll do it but it's you never feel good yeah unless you're like the first or second person in there after that it's just torch this whole thing <laughs> i mean i don't know what y'all do in a hotel. i know what i do in a hotel and i'm like i don't want to be after other people do the same thing i mean all the all time Ugh. And those, I don't think the people that clean the rooms are all that motivated. They don't get beers while they get to do that. Oh, that's true. Maybe yeah. they should. Uh, well, that's just a beer while you're working. Mm-hmm. There's nothing weird about that. No. 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 Not at all. Um, I drank all of mine because y'all, you were talking about how you've never been in a, I never had a shower beer. Uh, brewed IPA. I'd never had a brewed IPA until this moment. So now what's, what's the difference between a brewed IPA and just a IPA? So the the brute comes in because it's Wait, so. Wait, you say brute? Brute. Oh, brute. Like, like oh, okay. wine. Brute. Oh, I thought you said brood. Like B R U T. Well, he did brute. Brut. He brewed the brute. Yeah. Um, it's essentially because it's really dry. So think of like a brute champagne, like dry champagne. Yes. And so the the key to it is the um, glucoamylase enzyme that you add to it. Mm. Um, it's been around for a long time, glucoamylase. It's not something that's like new to the industry. Think about Mick Ultra mm-hmm. um, and low calorie or low carb beers, yeah. um, because they're they're super dry. They ferment out all the sugars that they can. Um, they also use it in distilling a lot to increase their efficiency. Mm-hmm. Um, it just breaks down uh, some of those unfermentable sugars that um, the yeast normally couldn't ferment, and mm-hmm. it breaks those down into simple chain sugars so mm. that they'll ferment those. So okay. instead of a finishing gravity of you know 012 or 014, 015, wherever your IPA sits, or 010. It's 001 or even even less than one. So yeah. it, it goes into the negative. So it's like 0.999 something. Yeah, you know? super, super dry. Yeah, but bone dry and there's really not a lot to it. Um, I like it. You know, it's it's clear, it's crisp, it's dry. So you just want to keep drinking them. Mm-hmm. And I think this was de- really developed as kind of the uh, West Coast's answer to the New England yeah. IPA. Yeah. Um, but it's it's definitely catching on. I mean, there's there's a lot of people doing them. There's... But at least six or seven that have been released throughout Houston so far. So. Is it including including our collaboration with Whole Foods? Yeah, yeah, that was a brood IPA. Yeah, yeah, it was. When, is that what was the timeline on that? Uh, that was a few couple weeks ago. 
okay. uh, a few weeks ago. I think there, it's gone now because it was selling really well. Yeah. But yeah. They should do that again. Y'all should do that again. Because that's I like that a lot. Um, I don't. I can't say I'm not a, a hazy New England IPA fan, but there's a lot of variety and variation, and I'm not. There's a certain part that I like, and there's certain parts that I am not as big a fan of. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, w- I would drink one or two. I think the the New Englands for me are just too sweet. Yeah. Overall, yeah, it's like I want one or two, or not even two. Really, like half of one's probably good, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but to me, they all just end up kind of tasting the same. Mm-hmm. Um, what what I think the brute offers is a lot of differentiation between the beers. It's mm-hmm. so like the first one we did was Nelson Sauvin and Hallertau Blanc were the hops, same same grain bill and everything. Simple grain bill, just Pilsner malt. Um, and it was yeah Nelson and Hallertau Blanc, and it came out very West Coast. So it had a very like dank kick from the Hallertau Blanc with kind of a white whiny ness mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it turned out really good and we crushed that. It did not last very long at all. And then, so we did this one and we decided, well, let's change up the hops on it. So keep everything else the same, change the hops and see what kind of different profile we get. So this was Summer and Vic Secret, which are Southern Hemisphere hops, more Vic Secret's like a baby galaxy. Mm-hmm. And then summer is uh, melon and uh, stone fruit. Okay. Uh, so southern hemisphere does that mean like New Zealand and yeah, New Australia? Zealand, Australia, yeah, more more uh, tropical. Okay. Tropical fruit notes. Is, is there anywhere in South America that can grow hops? Has anybody? I don't. Mm, that's a good question. I know there's people in Florida that are trying it right now. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's almost South America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down in the, maybe the Keys. I don't maybe. Know. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I maybe. Uh, I could see like, yeah, definitely not close to the equator, but a little bit, a little bit further away. Yeah. But I mean, they're trying to try in a couple of different places or trying to grow them here in Texas. Yeah. Uh, I've grown some in my backyard with varying results. Yeah. I think it the really depends look, on the type. Yeah. yeah. The seas worked pretty well. The plants looked great. I don't, I didn't grow enough to get the, I mean, yeah. we got cones, but not enough to. Not a whole bunch. Yeah. I just like yeah. to rub them and smell them yeah. as I drove, you know, with my mower as I go by. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you smell like beer when you're walking through the backyard yeah. or when you're mowing. That's, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, we, it's almost like throwing those little uh, air scent things in your uh, garbage disposal, uh-huh. you know, where you're like, oh, garbage disposal smells. So you drop one of those little beads in there. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that. Let's yeah. just mow over some hops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Now we had to, we, we got rid of them though. They grow really fast and really tall. I had them on the fence. Yeah. And I needed a much higher fence, <laughs> but um, you can train them out horizontally yeah. yeah and we i did some of that but then they die off yeah and then you can see my fence which isn't as good so now there's jasmine so it's for a few months of the year it smells really great back there but that stuff grows fast too can you use there's jasmine tea i wonder if you can use jasmine in a beer oh i'm sure yeah, yeah. i don't know how people use bacon in beer so yeah that's true bacon yeah no never had like a who made the rogue made a bacon like donut when that when their voodoo donut had like bacon or um, something. Didn't uh, didn't Buffalo Bayou do something? Yeah, their smoke on the bayou. They smoked the malts over. Yeah, that was one. I feel like they had bacon some somewhere. Maybe, oh, maybe it was just a maple syrup thing. Maybe. Yeah. It all kind of mixes together. You can pretty much use anything in beer. Yeah. yeah. Like there's nothing you can't. I wouldn't like, say nothing. I mean, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm sure there's things. <laughs> there's maybe a couple of things. arsenic or something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> strict huh. nine. Do we know what strict that... nine in the guacamole? Yeah, but I mean, if, what's the actual flavor though? Maybe we can mimic. Maybe we can de- deconstruct it. And maybe maybe arsenic has a. What we just don't know. We don't. We've never really been able to get into the flavor profile of arsenic <laughs> because it kills people. But I'm saying, if you could separate, I don't know. I'm sure there was one dude that was like, "This is kind of sweet," and then just died. You know? <laughs> yes. like, okay. He, yeah, right. he was about yeah. to write it down and then just yeah. fell out. Tastes like purple. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, yeah. The flavor of purple. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, no. Okay, let me ask you this. Brewed IPAs, and this is going to project my ignorance out there because uh, now, cause I, I don't know this. I think I've had one of these, the Beer de, Cham- Beer de Champagne. Mm-hmm. Is that, do they use champagne yeast with that? And is that different than? You know, some, some breweries have used champagne yeast because mm-hmm. um, with, like, those wine yeasts, they do metabolize more sugars, mm-hmm. typically. Um, with this one, I just use the Chico, just California ale yeast. Um, but then add the... And then with the Amilo in there, yeah. Amilo. So do you add that at the same time when you 
pitch the yeast? Or There's, you can actually use it like three different times, really. You can use it during the mash, mm-hmm. um, at the beginning of fermentation, which I've tried, and then after primary, okay. you can add it again um, or, or add it just in general. It, it's a very potent thing so it's just like just a small amount goes a and really what, long what is way. it is it a liquid or is it a it's a liquid tablet? yeah well there are some there are some powdered versions but it's yeah it's a liquid it's just uh similar to an amylase enzyme it's yeah. just a different type of amylase so you, just add it, you, you can add it at those th- three specific times you said each each brew or just usually you just pick one it. you pick one of those and out it. of everything what yeah. do you prefer uh, I actually kind of prefer, because I'm a lazy home brewer, I prefer just pitching it at the same time as the yeast. Mm-hmm. Um, this last one that's in the fermenter right now is actually an all-cascade version. So okay. the same same grain bill, but it's just all-cascade hops. Mm-hmm. And this one I waited until after primary okay. to throw it in there. Um, I think it just kind of yeast health stuff, you know, so you don't, like, stress the yeast out or anything like that. Um, so you don't give them too much sugar. Yeah. Basically, they get a second meal. You know, a few uh, days later. Yeah, I was gonna say if you throw it in after primary, do they it kind of kick back up? Oh, definitely. Yeah, when see uh, bubbles again in the when Brash did theirs, they they pitched in the amilo and it fermented for like another three days after it was already terminal. So yeah. it stopped. They added amilo and then it went another three days. Uh, so wow. yeah, it definitely unlocks quite a few uh, quite a few goodies for the yeast. Yeah, who knew? Yeah, they love who, that stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah, but then you don't use necessarily as much malt, so your starting gravity is only like. You know, ours is like 052, 054, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And then by the time it ferments down to zero, then you still end up with like a six and a half, seven percent. What, know? what are the economics of what, now? What is the what, a million? What is it again? The uh, well, so there's different products, but I, I we usually call it Amilo 300 as Amilo. the product. Yeah, Amilo. but there's the, Amilio, uh, the mighty duck man. Yeah. <laughs> Emilio Estevez. This is like Emilio. Yeah. Oh, that'd be a good brute IPA name. Like yeah. We use the Emilio Estevez. Yeah. yeah. The Mighty Duck. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Night at the Roxbury. Like I was like, uh, never mind. It's <laughs> That's the Wayback Machine. Yeah. yeah. We, that was on one of, when we had a, in college before I moved to Houston, DVDs. You didn't have Netflix or anything. So we had like seven or eight DVDs that were in heavy rotation. Night at the Roxbury. Was DVD and chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me and my roommates, Sam and Kevin. <laughs> DVD and chill. Everybody yeah. had the wall of DVDs. Mm-hmm. You know, like the How, who had the bigger stack, the bigger yeah, tower. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And when you were really close roommates, you mixed them. Yeah. yeah. But you, you always had them labeled. You're like, no, 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 that one's mine. Yeah. Yeah. You probably still have some. Well, if you haven't gotten rid of all your DVDs yet, you know. I'm still clean. Clean. Yeah. They'll make a comeback. I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe. They'll, they'll I mean. Cassette got, tapes, they, they came back. Yeah. Just like everybody said they would. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, hold on. I want to get into uh, whatever. What were we talking about before I went all Emilio? Uh, Emilio. Bru- oh, the Emilio. What it, Emilio. What it was? Or, uh, uh, what was I going to ask? So your ignorance all, about it? Yeah. Oh, you already asked that. Um, oh. No, you already did. No, economics of it. Like, how oh, like, yeah. like, is it better to use less grain and a little bit of that? Or I don't think, it, you know, for craft breweries, I don't think they really look at it as an economic thing. You mm-hmm. know, for the big guys, yeah, they're like, oh, how can we use less grain yeah. and get more alcohol and whatever? Then it's it's a bigger thing for them, which is why it was developed in the first place. Okay. Okay. But for craft brewers, it's mostly about the drying aspect to it. So sure. they're not they're not too concerned about, oh, well, I don't have to use as much grain because, I mean, you're still using a ton of hops. So yeah. it's not like you're really saving a whole lot of money <laughs> anywhere. But, yeah, I mean, a few less pounds of grain here and there. Um, with the same amount of hops so yeah it's almost like uh the brood ipa is almost like the bridge between like a hoppy pilsner and ipa like uh, I, I don't know could like, be yeah could be like a like a you know the the ipls that everybody was trying to do like yeah. the the loggers that just never never really seemed to catch on yeah yeah but it's similar to that you know but it's uh, yeah. a little little different yeah, yeah. i but yeah the uh, flavor profile maybe I, maybe I don't, i'd have to sit them all down well, it's drier it's uh and quicker turnaround for the breweries you know mm-hmm. so i like it i think i'm a fan i'm gonna say it right now i'm a, at least the, the one you made yeah. sweet yeah it no, actually really it was good. very dry yeah. it was very dry no no sweetness at all i think that's one of the main uh catching points to it is that it's dry but you want more mm. and that's what breweries are really concerned about economically is that people drink more beer so yes if i'm gonna sit down and have one cool but if I sit down and have one and it makes me want to have another one, mm. then that's even better. Yeah. Th- yeah. Like when I think ciders, I think really dry. I love really dry ciders. And so that kind of, it's that same 
whatever that is. The yeah, the crisp, refreshing, like yeah. sharp. Yeah. yeah, where you're like, yeah, I'll I'll have another sip. <laughs> maybe maybe have a shower beer. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good shower beer. I'll try it. I'll it try would, it. Yeah, I'll try yeah. It. yeah. You get the steamy hot on one side and the crisp cold on the other. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Morning at eight o'clock. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have a bottle opener over there? Oh, I got one in my pocket. Yeah. I brought a couple of bottles, a uh, little fresh yellow rose. And uh, last year's Pumpkinator. Pumpkinator came out officially yesterday. Um, so I got a few. I always get a few bottles this year. I'll, I typically will have one new bottle. But last year, it seems like each year they're making more and more of it. Or at least it's more available or something. I don't know. Um but I always I put some back, so I'll be drinking more of last year's this year. Maybe compare the two, but yeah. Anyway, yellow rose. Thank you. Got some of that. Thanks, thanks, Blake. This is the last bottle that I have left from my episode at, at Lone Pine. He was gracious enough to uh, bless me with some of this super fresh yellow rose. Gotta love that fresh yellow rose. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Good pour, Mike. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, we always look for um, interesting glassware to give away for our anniversary. Oh, yeah, plug. We have our four-year anniversary coming up. Yeah, let's talk about all about it. That's a, that's a whole section there. Well, it's a whole, the whole segment. episode. Yeah. Um, this Saturday uh, at what time? Starting at what time? Uh, noon. Noon yeah. to... Uh, three ish. Yeah. Noon to three. It's, it's pretty much an all day thing, but yeah, yeah we we give some some people parameters, you know, where all the real fun stuff's going to happen. But if you want to show up at ten, we'll be here at ten. Working on trying to get some barbecue going. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, we we're supposed to have somebody roll up with a smoker, and they had some family stuff, so we're trying to trying to figure out what we're going to do. At the end of the day, we could just do fajitas. So yeah, nothing Never wrong with that. Yeah, we'll we'll have some food of some sort. At some point in time. We just have a hang in the parking lot or hang on the front steps or how do you wait out it? Um, inside? Probably inside this weekend since the weather is supposed to be kind of eh. But okay. we have some really big tents that we might put up in the back parking lot. Okay. Uh, now we kind of stay out of people's way and we can get back there and uh, be be kind of off on our off on our own. But <laughs> not have the public too much of the public view. Currently, well, we'd like public view, you well, know, so people come in. But yeah, you know, if everybody's side. walking around drinking, you know. Yeah, yeah. The park Currently, side. according to the iPhone, no rain on Saturday. Perfect. Overcast, 77. Oh, that, that might be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Might be perfect. Yeah. So. We'll see. We'll see what we can, uh, what our uh, food, food Situation. will, will come out like. But yeah, we will definitely have food. Yeah. So, so they're going to be like. Food what, and drink. What type yeah. of festivities besides the food and drink? Just. So we've got uh, tons of raffle stuff to give away um, that we've been uh, collecting. Um that's the that's the biggest part of it, you know. Sure. Um, the raffle, um, and then we've got a couple of a uh, couple of things that we've got to roll out. Uh, one of which being, um, you know, we were selected by Spike Brewing. If you're familiar with Spike Brewing, um, they've picked us to to do a retail pilot program. So we have a ton of Spike gear coming in. High school, and we're only one of five stores in the entire country that get this opportunity. So. Yep, they're gonna. We're gonna have a whole like retail display set up um, that they actually built for us. Oh, cool. um, it's like a four by four thing, you know, that's got all this stuff on it. Um, and yeah, it, it it's great, like good quality stuff, and the pricing is super competitive. Um, and I'm I'm super excited about it. I'm I'm ready to ready it's, to get my hands on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's an amazing time to be a home brewer. I mean, when you think about even just five years ago, like what's available now versus in like your own, you can make your own home commercial brewery, like conical fermenters and the mash tun, like everything's like insulated and, and uh, glycol chillers and it's heaters and tiny versions of very large breweries. Yeah. Yep. You can play. Oh, face painting. Forgot about face painting. Face we're, painting. we're working on a face painter right now. Oh, yep. nice. Uh, they can do some uh, beer beer stuff you yeah. know maybe so or looks. whatever whatever the kids want i don't know yeah i don't know <laughs> unicorn or we'll see yeah. unicorn drinking a shower baseball beer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely oh and we'll have games and stuff like that we'll have oh. cornhole and everything set up yeah so, yeah it's really just a party yeah that's cool it's, yep but back to the oh sorry this no it's fine <laughs> i always there's always time for face party yeah <laughs> no um like the stuff you can get like spike there's a few other companies man spikes one you know looking at what they've got right here it's um 
Yeah, man, you can do your own home, you know, home craft brewery. It's not like home brewing used to be like you had to, you know, craft everything out of a, a cooler, s- a cooler, and a salad uh, strainer, yeah. and a short of like pressing your own kettles out. You know, that's I mean, yeah, yeah. It's uh, definitely was a was a build it yourself sort of hobby for a long time, and yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of companies now that you know just manufacture stuff specifically for home brewers, which is really awesome. Yeah. If and you, you tons can, of innovation. Yeah, you can get a, a killer, like, it's crazy because like, you can get a brew shed in your backyard. If you can run power and, I guess, water to it, mm-hmm. forget it. You can. Yep. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just, I'm going to be a... And you know, cable and uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, just Wi-Fi, and, really. And, you know, recliner and a fridge and, I mean, really, you just kind of move out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah, it was nice to see the family once in a while. And they're, and they're just right. They could come the and visit. They're just you know? right. I mean, they lawn. could wave. Yeah, they don't have to be all yeah. uppity. Yeah. 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 They're, they're in the backyard. But seriously, Back like, like streaming yeah. and everything, like, you don't, it's it's really just, uh, do you, and do you even need water? I guess you, water would be nice. Yeah. I mean, there's always water hose, but yeah, I mean, you know, you could, you, you could actually pipe it in. Yeah, yeah. And run it through a filter yeah. and the whole deal. But anyway, yeah, but I'm just stuff. saying, yeah, you can you could deck it out, stainless steel, it looks sharp, man. That's I, those are the things I sit there. Yeah, they have some really really cool stuff, and we'll we'll have the basic stuff that they have, plus mm-hmm. all the accessories that go on. Um, you can still do fully custom stuff through them. That's how they got started was full custom kettles. That's cool, um, and that would still be through them. But we would appreciate you say, hey, we we're here because of Farm Boy. Right. Um, but yeah, you know they they can punch ports in and weld them in wherever wherever you want them. So literally, you can customize your kettle or conical or whatever it may be. If you don't like where a port's at, you can tell them, "Hey, you put it on the other side." Right. Yeah, no problem. Chunk, you know. Yeah. Um, and they do that, and they have full turnkey systems. We won't do those. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's a it's just a retail program or a, a pilot program, um, you know, for their basic stuff. Uh, but eventually, that might that might happen. But it's a slow rollout. So. And, and do you know, I mean, I don't know how much you know about these, but these fermenters, mm-hmm. I'm kind of somewhat similar. I, I said earlier, I want a, a fermenter, a bigger fermenter. Yeah. Are these, um, would you need to put these like in a, you know, a controlled, like a chamber of some sort? Or are these climate you, controlled? You can, or they have, they do have a jacket that'll go around to help insulate them. Okay. But there's a stainless steel coil that will actually go through the top tri-clamp fitting. And then in that you can run glycol or chilled water. So to, with the, set the can you can you set a temperature? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You would you would put uh, the temp probe. You would plug it into a temp controller and okay. that hook that to the pump. So okay. when the temp is too high, it'll turn the water on and and once so the this, temp drops back down, then so it'll I could just back. stick this in. Let's say in my refrigerator. This this system yeah right yeah here. you could put the whole thing in there. Yeah okay. definitely definitely. And it could still be. I don't have to stick it in a. What do you do with that front room now? I don't have to stick it in a freezer with Hold the temperature override on. on it. What? Your front room. It's like an office computer room. Yeah, you don't do any office work. Well, I don't do any office work, but I... Let's clear that thing out and make his, it in... That's his man cave. Yeah, let's yeah. make it into a, a brewery. Yeah. It's too small. It's no, it's no, not. No, it's not. No, no, it's never too small. You'd be surprised. What's the square footage on it? If anything, I would use it my, that one room that I have all my stuff in now. Yeah, let's get you a storage unit. Well, either one, we need to... <laughs> we, we got some work to do. No. Something. Can you do a brewery and a storage unit? They might they might get angry when you start sawing the floor, right? Maybe. Ah, if it's all uh, platforms. Yeah. If it brings in customers, they might be okay with it. They're like, that's oh, true. Yeah, sure. I thought we it's actually to... we've got our bus parked at a and they've air conditioned store. I mean, you could brew there for like home I was, brew. I was gonna say you, you you have the bus. You could do a brew bus. That would be cool. I don't. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, technically, you could make it work for sure. <laughs> I don't know what the legal ramifications are for any of that. Kind I mean, of you're just making sugar water. That's true. Yeah. Would all ferment? I guess fermentation would have to take place. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Like this is a, this is a road beer. It's been just like <laughs> rocking around in the back. Yeah. You know? Ooh, the first ever. You would never get it cleared out. Fully mobile. <laughs> Even if you used Emilio, five. I think the yeast would just always be in suspension. Okay. Like, hit a couple of bumps. You're like, oh crap! There goes there goes the uh, crystal clear pilsner. <laughs> does does Spike make a, a filter? 
Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if they have a filter, but they do have a racking arm that comes with their conicals, the so it goes yeah. on there so they can, you can rotate the racking arm so that you can find where the, where the yeast cake is and then move it just above that. Yeah. Uh, so you get clear beer off the top. Yeah. Yeah. And harvest that yeast off the bottom. Yeah. And it's got side glasses and stuff on it, so you can actually see what's coming through the side glass. So, you know, you can, uh, you can adjust things that way. But I mean, essentially that's like a, a mini, you know. A mini professional conical, yeah. yeah. That's home. exciting. That's exciting. It's baller, yeah. And yeah. they're it's like highly polished stainless, mm-hmm. and it takes very good photos. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> never has a bad side. Yeah. I was gonna say, I don't know if I would even, I don't know if I'd even brew on it as as much as I would just be like, you know, Instagram photos or whatever. You'd just be cleaning it, just cleaning like it all the time. You'd brew and then just clean it. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. You filling me up there. When top landing off? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fun. That's exciting. But yeah, we've got, we'll have uh, both types of their kettles. So we'll do the uh, the Spike Plus kettles, which are the brand new ones that they just released uh, just a handful of months ago. Mm. But all the fittings on them are all inch and a half tri-clamp. Okay. So you can clamp on whatever type of valve you want. Uh, if you want a thermometer, if you want a Whirlpool port. Um, you just kind of do whatever you want with them, but it's, you don't have to thread. There's no Teflon tape. You don't have to screw anything in. It, it can be put on with one hand, you know, taken off, yeah, uh, awesome. very, very durable. And yeah, I mean, they, people, people like, them. how did this come about? I mean, you're one of five, do you know, first of all, where are the other four? Maybe, maybe. Uh, so let's see, there's one in, uh, Maryland, okay. uh, one in Michigan, uh, one in Denver. There is us. And then there's one other one. I Northwest think it's somewhere? probably Northwest. Yeah, West Coast, somewhere out there. All yeah. those, maybe other than the, I don't know about where. It depends on, I guess, where on in the West Coast. All those other places are covered in snow already. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Den- Denver's got like a foot of snow already. It's, it's funny because, you know, we don't brew during the summer. Of course, nobody really brews in the summer, like throughout the U.S. It's always a slow time. But we brew mostly in the winter mm. while they brew mostly in the spring. Mm. So it's kind of funny the way it works out because our – our winter is like their spring, yeah. Yep. Except for not as not as good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. not as good. We have two weeks of two weeks of uh, like right now fall. Yeah, yeah, total. Like today and yesterday, even though it was raining, and then we've got like four more days to come. Yeah, yeah. and that'll be it. Yeah, and then it'll then be all it. the leaves will fall off, and then it's just nothing. <laughs> yeah, I love Houston. I really do. I love it. There's something there's something about this city that's just awesome, but we didn't we didn't get the best hand with weather. Definitely not. So we have to bluff a little bit yeah. here and there. Well, that's I would like to have been in the meeting where it's like, where are we going to build this town at? <laughs> oh, there's a swamp. <laughs> that's. Well, I mean, it's not like they were worried about property value back then. It's yeah, not like you no. had to buy it from. Yeah. You know, well, you can get into that whole debate about <laughs> whose property it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Columbus Day coming up. Yeah. Or did, or we already had Columbus Day, right? It already happened. Yeah. It already yeah. Happened. That's kids, such, kids a, such a pointless holiday. Um, I just, I'm like, I went to, I was trying to try to go to the bank that day. And I was like, yeah, going to the bank and rolled up and everything's closed. I was like, what? Why is everything Today's closed? Monday. Oh, Columbus Day. Why do we do this? <laughs> yeah. Columbus Cause Day. Because he ran know. into a big chunk of land. He didn't, you know, he thought he it was something lost. else. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And it wasn't even here. It was way south of here <laughs> way south the way southeast yeah yeah so it's like uh, yeah really why i don't i'd have to go look and why why how it became a holiday which pre- yeah well i'm sure google or siri or whoever would tell you which president enacted that uh, yeah maybe it was a big uh big thing during the day maybe it was like well we just don't have enough holidays so yeah they, let's, yeah let's give people another that holiday was before arbor yeah. day was a thing and yeah, Earth whatever. Day and Earth Day National and Beer Day and National Spaghetti Day and National Pizza Day. And yeah, there's a day every day. Yeah, I hold on, today let's, is. Sure oh, let's something. find out what day is today. So maybe it's a National Inner Brews Day. Yeah, ooh, that'd be uh, a national. Oh, National Shower Beer Day. We should start that. Uh, let's see. Na- that could be a thing. Are could there be plenty of people that would uh, do it. Okay, you gotta speak right into the mic. Mike. Sorry, you gotta oh. speak right into the. Sorry, yeah. There you go. I can't hear myself. Move your. Move no, it's, your fine. Stand. it's fine. It's fine. It's uh, fine. Today is National Pharmacy Technician Day. National Bosses Day. So, Landon, you're the it's boss. Your day. So, if you're a pharmacy technician supervisor, does that mean you get like double? double Hold on. Oh, you could still add another layer to this. National Feral Cat Day. So, if you own a feral cat, who owns? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you don't really own feral cats. That's they just, true. They kind of just happen. 
accumulate around you, right? Well, it's also Global Cat Day, so you can just a normal cat, but a feral global cat, extra cat points. Day. Global Cat Day. World Food Day. It seems very today. general. Huh? This is all today? This is all October 16th, yep. World Food Day? Yep. It's Nash- too general. It needs to be specific food, right? Um, you can't just say, hey, it's everybody eat lunch day. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, they mailed that one in. National Liqueur Day? That's the core, cool. yeah. yeah. So where's the Bailey's at? Yeah. Oh, seriously. Yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I brought. We need to. This is. This needs to be something that you check every morning. Like, <laughs> what are these national days today? Check, check your national day and your horoscopes. Okay. Why horoscope. is Columbus Day a holiday? Um, Technology is awesome, isn't it? It is. Right. right. You have a Thumbs. question. Um, I'm not going to read this whole article. Y'all may need to. You have like. 18, 18 million people that post stuff on there that have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah. Yes. And then one person that does, and everybody tells them they don't okay. know what they're talking about. Okay, Mike, I'm going to put you on the spot. Name the three ships. I'm sorry, name a brute ship? N- name the three ships, the Columbus Odina, P- 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 Pinta, and the Santa Maria. He even, Maria. Had, he even had Nina, the... Uh, Pinta. Yeah. Pinta? You actually not... You, you Ni- Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. You, uh, Maria? Maria. 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 You knocked that out of the park. Yeah. That's pretty good. I, Today is um, game three. That is true. Ooh, yeah. Game three. You're knocking and, out of parks today. Yeah, I hope so. No, uh, sorry. We're still in Boston, right? Mm-mm. No, we're no, back no, home. We're back oh, home. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. yes. We would. That would have been tied. What is the uh, What's the pine tar situation look like? Uh, I've seen a lot of rumors about it. I don't know. I haven't heard any. Uh, Wait, what? You heard you know, a pitcher for Red Boston, Sox kept yeah. going to his. Forearm. forearm. You can see he's got like pine tar. Really? On his forearm, yeah. Are they going to review it? Are they going to suspend it? Of course they're do. not going to do anything yeah, about there's it. There's nothing you can do. I mean, we're the one has who to be done game like, too. We're not it's, gonna it's funny because almost any other sport, they go back and they look at the film and they're like, even, you know, college football, if the officials miss something, um, you know, egregious, mm-hmm. they, they'll go back and review it. Not only during the game, but the conference will go back and review stuff that might have happened on the sideline that was out of the scope of the referees or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then they'll go back through and, and fix it. But, yeah, this was the only one that's like, okay, obviously there's something on there. And I don't, I'm not, I don't watch a whole lot of baseball, and I know that there's – you know they're they're more lenient on certain things, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that that just seemed like something that was like uh, maybe y'all should maybe y'all should address that at least. Going to his forearm and then like to his belt, like I'm just adjusting my belt. He yeah, he touch his forearm and then he then he take the ball and he would nuke it up. Yeah, rub it all over the ball. Mm. Yeah, and that was every time. Yeah. Who, which pitcher was it? I don't remember, but I mean, was there a starter or was there starter? No, it was, one of, it was, it was a reliever. Oh, yeah. some reliever, third, fourth guy, <laughs> the guy with it? the glasses and the. No, the mullet? Kelly. No, I don't think that was him. He, was that guy, other. Something about that guy bothers me because he's on the other team, I think. Uh, he's a good pitcher. but I mean, there's nothing they can do now. You know, a loss. We're still going to get the loss. Maybe they can oh, suspend yeah, them for the rest of this what, or next year. I don't know, but that's not going to change anything that I want changed. It adds so. to the drama, which is fun. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Um, in 1892, President Benjamin Harrison issued a proclamation encouraging Americans to mark the 400th anniversary of Columbus's voyage uh, with patriotic festivities. So it really should have been just like a one day thing. A one like off. A, hey, it's a four hundred year thing. Like yeah, and maybe not an every year thing. Nineteen ninety two, five hundred would have been a big one. Maybe maybe he thought the U.S. wouldn't last that long. Probably maybe he was like, yeah, it was going for ten years, and then you know we'll we'll get defeated by somebody. Yeah, it started in um, seventeen ninety two, just to honor, and that was a regional thing in New York, just to honor the Italian American heritage. That was before we had a president. In 1792? No, we had presidents then. We started having presidents in like 17... 1776? When was... I don't think Washington was elected until like 17... I don't know. When was Washington first elected? You look that up on... July 4th, 1776? Yeah. That's the... Uh, That's the when we became a country, but he wasn't elected. Oh, yeah. He wasn't elected until after, after the war. The, yeah. Ooh. Well, we did have a president, though. He it wasn't... Um, God, it, thanks, uh, Congressional Pawn Stars. Time. Yeah, for uh, all the Continental Congress or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was, he was technically the first president. leader. Seventeen eighty nine. You know? So yeah, we had presidents by then. Washington oh, was two still years. Three huh? years. Yeah, Washington was still in his he because he did what two terms and then they wanted to elect him again. He was like ah no I'm out. In which that set the precedent until Roosevelt. And Only then, for presidents though, not for the other politicians. They're right. like, nope, I'm going to hang on to this ship <laughs> as long as I can. Yeah, yeah. They can't all be Washington. This is true. I'd like to meet him. Maybe he wasn't anything like anybody thinks he was. <laughs> they say he was tall. 
at least compared to people at the time. So yeah, he's probably he was like six two. Yeah. yeah. And every and like, everybody so like else size. was like yeah, yeah five three. So he's probably a giant in the day. And he had wooden little, teeth. Little Quakers. Yeah. 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 Did you ever see the uh, John Adams HBO uh, miniseries? Mm-mm. I don't think I saw that one. It's worth watching. It's Is good. It? I did watch the Jefferson uh, Jefferson series on uh, uh, PBS. Or like, oh, PBS. I was or uh, Roosevelt. Uh, sorry. S- Not Jefferson. Roosevelt. Yeah. I was going to say like uh, moving on up. The Jeffersons. No, 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 no. It was, uh, sorry, it was uh, Roosevelt's. The Roosevelt's. Yeah, on, that was good. Uh, PBS, Ken Burns. Yeah. yeah. yeah Dude, Ken Burns always awesome. Yeah. You, you get down on that, Mike? You get down on you, sh- you haven't watched the baseball? You're a big baseball fan. You haven't watched like baseball? baseball? That was one of his first ones, though, right? Uh, yeah. It's early. Somewhere, yeah, it's early. It yeah. was, uh, it's, there's 10 episodes, and they're all like two and a half hours long. Yeah. So if you hate, like, spare time <laughs> and like listening <laughs> to, like, old baseball talk, like they start like in the 1700s. It's the it's Peter Coyote, you know. Yeah. He's got that like soothing voice. Yeah. Yeah. And you're talking about like old old shit, like old like <laughs> they were using like like brontosaurus bones to hit, you know, a a little the first mammal ragball. Yeah. Yeah. An armadillo. An armadillo like the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so yeah, uh yeah, it was just a day they had a party, it looks like, and then it just kind of stuck around, and now we're still doing it. Yeah. And so... Well, you know, there was a few people online that said that uh, maybe we should do a national holiday on Election Day. I was like, you know, that's... I, I like the idea of that. It's not know? a bad idea. I mean, I don't think it really encouraged people to vote, but, you know, at least... I'd, yeah. It, it would have more meaning than, than something else. I don't voting know. Voting's an interesting thing, because, I mean, it's like, you want people to exercise their right, but... You know, not everybody should. Well, it's uh, that's the way the the parties look at it, right? Or yeah. they're like, we want as many people to vote on our side as possible. <laughs> yes. So we don't My want favorite. those other people the to Democrats vote. Democrats are like, get the vote out. You know, hey, not you though. Yeah, the Democrats are like, let's call MTV. The the Republicans are like, let's call AARP or you know, get those commercials on Fox News and all that oh, stuff. It's like, geez. get the old people. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, no, I'm thinking national holiday would be good. And voting, I don't know that voting online would be a bad thing. Everything else is online. I don't see. It's true. If we can. Surely, surely there's a blockchain. Yeah. I mean, if they can do Bitcoin online, surely we'd be able to vote. Right? Yeah. It, it would. You would think. Mike has deep opinions on this. Mike doesn't get political ever. I don't what? You don't get political ever. No. No, which is good. That's just why he's. See all the wrinkles around his eyes? You don't, because there's none. Because he doesn't worry. <laughs> that's that. That's that look he gives people when they start saying something about politics. He's like, "Huh? What? Yeah." And it's like none of this matters. It's true. You lost me. It's true. Yeah. So most no. of it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It's like, uh, what was it? Chris Rock? Was it Chris Rock on Saturday Night Live where he's like, "When did Obama ever make you a sandwich?" <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, because none of them make you sandwiches. So, what's the what's the point? <laughs> yeah, it's like he didn't really affect your life. If he made you a sandwich, then he affected. Then, something. then he affected you. Know, he got you oh, anyway. Um, what were we talking about before all that? Uh, I don't know. Let's just keep talking about beer, this. Columbus Day, Spike Brewing. Oh, Spike Brewing. Yeah. So they discovered that uh, if you make amazing equipment, that um, they'll sell it, sh- you know, ship it to you on one of their boats or yeah. trucks. So, so when it's when when the display and everything's set up here, uh-huh. are they going to be able? Or like, are we would we as a consumer be able to order from you? Or oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, order? we'll have it in stock. Yeah, so if oh. you come in and you find a kettle that you want or a conical, I mean, we'll we'll have those in stock. So you can just buy it here, pay for it, and go. Yeah, and about take it and walk away. Yeah, nothing okay. at all. Yeah, that and, day. and moving forward, you know, if there's any issues with it, then you bring it back here. You don't have to ship it back to somebody. You don't have to do whatever else. Cool. Okay. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. come in here and, and check things out. Okay. But, um, you know, they're – Spike's really big on customer service. They have a huge customer service arm. Um, customer service and quality are kind of their two main things, mm-hmm. you know, and they that's that's kind of where they come from. Now, they get, oh, like, go ahead, Mike. Are yeah. they, like, going to train you up on this stuff or? I've been studying for a while. Okay. Yeah. So sure. I've been looking at things and I've been talking with their, with their, uh, with their reps okay. um, to do everything. And when I have questions, I ask them and they answer them and I can pass that so information you your, on. You can build your brain up. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. But yeah, it's uh, one of those things too is, you know, they said, you know, maybe, maybe later on we can start doing some custom stuff here, but for right now they know what they're doing, gotcha. you know? So gotcha. why, why, 
give it to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing mm-hmm. that can make mistakes or whatever else. So yeah, their, their custom stuff will still be through them, but you can give us a shout out and that'll help me out. Yeah. And well, yeah. Okay. And I guess they, if you, if you want, I guess they could deliver the custom stuff here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, how did this come about? How did you hook up with the spine guy? So I went to homebrew con woo-hoo, in Portland, Oregon this last year. Yeah. Which is a lot of fun for all you uh, homebrewers out there. Really, not even homebrewers, but it's just like a people who thing, a festival. Uh, uh, it's a conference, yeah. So it starts for me. Thing? No, no, no. It's a three day thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it starts uh, starts Wednesday for me because of the industry stuff that they have going on, uh, and then goes through uh, really Saturday. You know, so it's a uh, it's it's a fun event. There's like thirty five hundred people were at the last one. Yeah. Like vendors? Like no, yeah. like like just, uh, just regular just dudes. regular old Goers. people. Yeah, but there's a huge. <laughs> Obviously, the huge like um, the hall, you know, with all the all the vendors and stuff there, um, exhibit hall. Mm. Um, but every every exhibit has beer in it, which is cool. <laughs> so you have like um, commercial breweries on one side, and then like homebrew people on the other side. But everybody's brewed stuff with what they've got, and there's giveaways, and yeah, it's it's good. I mean, I come back with like. I, I pack an extra luggage so I can bring back all the all the swag that yeah, I get there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, so Spike had a had a uh, booth set up and I talked to him the year before last too. And I just told him, Hey, you know, when, it, if y'all decide y'all want to do some retail stuff, some wholesale stuff, like, let me know. I'm, I, I really like your, your gear and people really seem to like it as well. You'll get great reviews. The quality looks spot on. Um, it's like the thickest kettle walls in the, you know, in manufacturing wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything's really well done. And they, it seems like they think things out really well, but they also keep the price down too. They don't let it, balloon up like a couple of other a couple of other manufacturers do yeah. um and he was like yeah sure you know we'll, we're working on something you know we'll let you know you know and had a few beers and then all of a sudden i got an email they were like hey we'd love for you to participate in this we remembered talking to you at homebrew con and we've been watching your social media and stuff and looks like we're good partners you know and, and that's really the way they look at it, is more of a partnership than you know them just selling me stuff and me turning around and selling you stuff it's it's really you know you being able to get the best product from them through me right and the best service possible as well so yeah it's i think it'll be really cool i'm i'm ready to ready to work with these guys that's, that's cool. awesome that's one one thing i like you, everybody has a, a great online presentation now you know you, you see all the the cool equipment and all that kind of stuff and but to be able to put your hands on it and kind of feel the quality definitely you, you can't you can't beat that definitely there's no replacement for that so for sure um, and we might have people that just want to come in and and check the kettle out mm-hmm. and then maybe they go do their custom kettle mm-hmm. but they can see what the kettle's like they can take measurements if they want to so mm-hmm. you can kind of quantify you know instead of just like cutting stuff out of cardboard and you know like it's going to be this big around yeah you can actually you know get your hands on it and you can see what it's going to what it's going to be um before you get to that point and like i said i you know i have no problem with you jumping online and ordering from them just in the comments say hey farm boy sent me here that's cool yeah that's cool but yeah we're super excited i i'm I'm pumped i'm ready they're in you said they're in milwaukee right yeah Mm -hmm. manufactured in milwaukee yeah milwaukee just went up Two one. Was, two Wisconsin. One. Yeah. Wisconsin. They just went up 2-1 last night. Oh, yeah. Astros are obviously going to win this series. Spike, I know you're listening to the show because I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, latter half of October, we might have to, I don't know, just saying. I mean, we love you, but sorry in advance. I did, <laughs> I, I did tell my wife that I'd rather the Dodgers won so I didn't have to root against the Brewers. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna root against them or whoever the other side is, but yeah. it would just it would hurt a little less, you know. Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, that. But I don't know. I mean, one, it would be the first two retractable roof stadium teams to ever play in a World Series against. The wow, Warriors. that's deep ESPN stats mm-hmm. right so there. Up with that, yeah. Last night, I was, yeah, we we're making the list, and it's like, nope, never happened. It's three never teams in each league that have one. Yeah, there need to be more. There will be agree, soon. Agree, but. With retractable roofs? Yeah, Rangers will have one. And if the Rays ever get a stadium, I think they'll have one too. Now they just have a roof roof. Yeah, yeah. there's really no reason if you're going to spend all that money to not do something with the roof these yeah. days. Yeah, and the, like Minnesota, what were you, what was Minnesota thinking? They're in Minnesota. Yeah. 
snows in April still. That's a really uh, well, the Viking Stadium in uh, that one's brand That's awesome. new. Yeah, it's not. It, I don't think it has a retractable roof, no. but it is really like a Viking very ship? nice, yeah. nice stadium. Well, I mean, football is one thing. For baseball, yeah, you kind of want to be outdoors. Yeah. But well, sometimes, but when you're in Minnesota. So like those first couple months, like if I think if the Rockies had to do it over again, they probably would have put a roof on that thing because they get snowed out every year. Who? Yeah, that's true. The Rockies. Oh, you know, if they were in the playoffs now, it would be an issue. Yeah, if they had won. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they could just go play at the high school field. You know, <laughs> be all right. That's what. That'd be, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Every batter hit a home run. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun though. And that would be an. That would actually be a lot of fun to watch. On on such a small field. Yeah. 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 Just, well, I mean, the dimensions are the same. Yeah, you know, but the uh, yeah, just there's the stands. There's and only like you know 500 people there. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have another. Do y'all want to crack open this pumpkinator? Yeah. 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 I mean, it would. It'd almost be sad if we didn't. Uh, officially, pumpkinator season. Uh, 2017 pumpkinator. Um, have I had any pumpkinator this season yet? I don't think I, I have. I haven't had one. I usually I usually have one. Just the one. Just the one. Yeah. Does this count? This doesn't count as one. This is like a third of a one. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Are you a pumpkin fan? I'm pumpkin fan, but the, not not so much on the spices. Okay. Yeah. That's why I like it a better a year after because kind of tones down, mellows a little bit. it out, and yeah. maybe two years Thank might be you. even better. I, just, I guess it just depends. But yeah, typically a year on it makes it really nice. Yeah, I have to be really kind of in the mood, but you Are know, you with weather like this, yeah. the mood is correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's the pizza? Brothers Pizza? Right Brothers Pizza right next door. They if you any? haven't had Brothers Pizza, you should go have Brothers Pizza. Do they make any um, squash pizza or zucchini? Uh, no, they do have the Big Ed. That's spinach and feta and chicken. That's nowhere close. But no, no, <laughs> chicken's kind of like a pumpkin. I just I, it's one of my favorite slices, so that's why I throw it. I only eat there eight days a week. So only, <laughs> only, eight yeah. Days. Okay, I'm gonna say that the. Um, the spicing on this this 2017 pumpkin, like I've got a whole I've got one from every year that they put it out, huh? Oh, picture you want to take a pic? Yeah, do that. Here, just slide that over. I'm trying to be speaking of spike brewing in your social, I'm trying to be a little more socially aware. So we'll let Mike take a picture as we talk. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, take some pictures, but then come back and talk, Mike. I want to know what your opinion is on pumpkinator. <laughs> okay. Right, I like so it. Well, you know, one thing that uh, St. Arnold does really well is they balance their beers mm-hmm. very well. So anything that hits market is uh, is definitely, I, uh, that's the only way I can say it. It's just very well balanced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which this is. It's not over the top, mm-hmm. um, but it is very nice to drink. It is. Um, now, as a home brewer, as a homebrew shop owner, have you seen the popularity of pumpkin beers wane a little bit yeah yeah well you know there's those there's the core group of people that that love them to Mm -hmm. death Mm -hmm. and they you know and they usually will brew like one or they'll do one like really big batch so that they can have some you know for next year Mm -hmm. essentially like you said let it sit for a year yeah um you know so there's always there's always that crowd of people that comes in and does all their pumpkin beers Mm -hmm. um I'm not one of them. I usually don't make a pumpkin beer, but it's just uh, I'm not big on the spicing of it. Mm-hmm. So that one's got, it's actually got a little bit of hops to it in the back, you know, like a little. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I haven't brewed it in a couple of years, but when I did, I got my ingredients here, my pumpkin porter, and I did cut back on the spicing. I added a little ancho chili powder. Oh, that sounds good. It was pretty yeah. good. Um, you know, it. My thought on. Pumpkin, I, like I'm kind of I, I geek out on pumpkins and fall and all that stuff. Like, to a why are you nodding? You do. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> like today, I, I had a chance to wear a flannel shirt. It's not that cold. It's not. I'm, but I'm like, I need to. I need yeah. to wear some flannel. I wear yeah. shorts year round. I have almost flannel shorts. Yeah, it's yeah, same shorts. pattern. Yeah, That'll work. Same pattern. Yeah. It's yeah. It's not that cold. But I was like, yeah. I thought about it last night because yesterday I wore a t-shirt and I was like, I want to feel the cold. But then it's like, you know what? I'm only going to have so many chances to wear a long sleeve shirt here. Might as well. I don't. I, I can probably count on one hand how many long sleeve shirts I have. <laughs> Everything for me is T-shirts and shorts. It gets a lot colder up where you're from. I, windier. Yeah. yeah, a lot windier up there. Yeah. yeah. So like your scale of what's cold. I don't know. How long have you lived in Houston? 
Uh, it's about ten years. Yeah. Okay. About so as long as I've been brewing, really. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you get acclimated to. I don't know if anybody gets acclimated to Houston. Let's be honest. The, the summer hits, and you're like, "What the? F- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what just happened? Why are we? Why is this? Why somebody, is this a thing? Somebody pouring water on me for no reason? Yeah. <laughs> and with a blowtorch? Yeah. <laughs> with the hair dryer? Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah. You never get used to that. But what you consider, what you consider cold. I think that gets pulled up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think quite a bit, you know, because I, I usually don't pull out a jacket. I, I won't wear pants unless it's, like, really in the 40s, you know. You and, like, and, like, uh, maybe, even, maybe even wet. It might even have to be raining and in the 40s for me to put jeans on or something. They're just, they're so restrictive. Um, you're, you're like, I just, you know, as much as I like bounce you and around, Donald Duck. maybe I do. <laughs> oh, geez. I could see a meme with that already. Um, I need, I need like short shorts though. Right? Um, no, I could, uh, you know, all the gymnastics that I do, you know, they're just the, uh, the, uh, jeans just don't, you need that flexibility. There. Don't let me, don't let me move around. Like I really want to all nimbly. They have those flex, flex jeans. Like this is one of those flexy flex shirts. Yeah, my gym machines. Mm-hmm. Are, yeah, they're nice. Yeah. I hate to admit it, but technology is a little, amazing. A little stretchy. Yes, they're nice. A little stretch. Little I don't have to wear the super baggy jeans, which, I mean, I like them because I need room because I got... Your, your no. Jinkos? I got big I got big legs. Wide leg. Yeah. Wide leg Jinko jeans. Wide leg and three-legged jeans. Remember three-legged <laughs> jeans? <laughs> <laughs> as, as, see, as big as my legs are, I, I have to do relaxed fit because mm-hmm. I just don't fit into other jeans. Yeah, so boot it, cut. It for, it's like, ah... I'll wear these for has to be uh, has to be relaxed fit boot cut. That's, that's about the only types of jeans I wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can't yep. do. Like, I'll say I actually wear slacks more than I wear jeans. Yeah, and that's just because we're required to for like football games. We have to mm. be like dressed nicely. Yeah, baseball umpires look like they have the most comfortable pants. You ever look like yeah. look like because you know they're doing a lot of squatting, right? Yeah, but they look super soft and they look. I'm like, that's not that I'm always looking at the umpire and his pants. I'm just saying I've noticed it. and I'm like. I want to get some of those pants just to wear because there's some of them have like the super baggy ones. I'm like, I want some of those. Those look cozy. I agree. I yet, agree. yet yeah. still pressed and not yeah, schleppy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Got to look professional. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, ish. Not, ish. not schleppy. Yeah. You don't want to look schleppy. schleppy. Yeah. Mike, what do you think of the pumpkin It's good. I like it. I'm all about the uh, Oktoberfest and the pumpkins and the spices. You like it, and and I like them cold. Like it's it's weird. It's I don't know. I guess they're not supposed to be cold. Cold, but I like these pumpkins. This is I probably like still a little cold. This is probably still a little warm. I mean, still a little cold. It should be a little warmer, maybe. I, I like them. I like that. I like the temperature. I think it's, I like it cold. I, think it's pretty good. Like, I need yeah. beers cold. I don't care what. So that's kind too warm for you. I I mean, it could be a little bit colder, okay. but it, it's still good. It's still cold. Yeah, it could always but be I'm always all, be colder. I'm all about the spice and the pumpkin. I, I like everything. Oktoberfest, okay. pumpkinators. I like them all. Yeah. Yeah, I have all those pumpkin. Like I've got a bunch. It's probably I need to make one next year. Tim Tim Foley from Shade Texas Craft, the internet all around. He was he came to the house to do a show, a liquid lunch, and he opened up the fridge. Which, by the way, my beer fridge died on me. Oh, boo! Just, it what? Oh, died. It died. So I mean, I think it's a simple repair, but I don't know. See, that's the way they make things these days. Is like your simple repair is almost as expensive as what a new fridge is. Yeah. I know, like my my kegerator here at the shop, the with all the stickers and stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna have to pay to repair that because I don't want to lose all my stickers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's really what the uh, yeah, yeah. It is what. I wonder it is. how much refrigerator repair is. A couple hundred bucks. Send out the Maytag man. Depending, depending on what it is. If it's a if it's residential, it's a lot cheaper than commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Which for whatever reason. Yeah, this is the one we got when we bought our first house. You know. Yeah, you should just 16 years ago or 17 ask years around, ago. See if you know anybody that's a... Oh, that's true. Social media. Refrigerator man. Yeah. Craigslist. Yeah. Hey, is there any weird people that want to come to my house? Or anybody at work? Just invite people over. We don't work with anybody that knows anything. Like that. Oh, that's true. He does uh, HVAC, so maybe. Conden- condensers and refrigeration. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. There's a thought. I yeah, drop a name. Yeah. Um, Save some money. Yeah, I think it... Because the lights still work. But I don't know if I hear the compressor trying to kick on or not. I don't know. I don't know how much a refrigerator compressor. I fixed costs. mine. Mine was a small one, probably you know one of them little dorm style ones. Mm-hmm. It was just a little plug that you took off of it, and you could hear it shaking. I was like, oh, that don't sound right. YouTube it. Luckily, the sticker, everything was still on at the model. I looked it up. This is the part you need. Eight dollar part. Got it. Send it in. 
plug Perfect. it back on, turn it back on, it got cold. So, did you have Might to be. like solder anything? No, nothing. It was just literally like a plug into the outlet. Oh, so it's an electrical yeah. electrical deal. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And it works. I'm like, so I've stayed. seen I've seen online with the whole sticker thing. You know, people will get uh, magnetic sheets uh-huh. and they'll put the sticker on the magnetic sheet and then cut around it. Yeah. And then and then put the sticker on their fridge. But then if they ever have to move it, it's they a can. Magnet. Yeah, it's a magnet. So they just that's pull it off. smart. I was like, that's a great idea. But my fridge is already covered. Yeah, it's so too late. Mine I do have a couple of magnets, but yeah, that's and a, and one patch. There's one patch over yeah, there. Yeah, me too. I'm and a, I, I put a little uh, magnetic. I, Super glued a magnet to the back of the patch. Is that what you did? No, this one actually had a peel off back to it. Okay. It was the Advocare Bowl, Texas Advocare Bowl, okay. which we, or was the Academy Bowl, whichever one it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Texas Bowl, it's always at NRG at the end Relying, of the year. Yeah. We usually, usually are uh, facilita- facilitating the, uh, the uh, officials for that since I oh, officiate. Okay. So yeah. we, we always, you know, make sure those guys and their families are taken care of when they come to town. We're the, just like the, Welcoming uh, committee, yeah. Welcoming committee. Do you bring they're, beer. They're people. Oh too. yeah, of course. Yeah. They're Actually, uh, last year the uh, referee for the Texas Bowl was a huge home brewer. Oh, cool. Really? Yeah, yeah, huge home brewer. So yeah, he came by the shop and. and which one, do you remember his name? Uh, yeah, not not off the top of my head. Yeah. That's what they need to do. Like, if when you're watching a, a bowl game that's not like the national, it's not a playoff game or the national championship game. They should do stats like that. Like, so what's this referee into? Some interesting bios. On yes, the, and if I saw like, nobody, stat. nobody cares about that though. Well, I would. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do because uh, they're all people, right? Yeah. If it's yeah, an yeah. avid homebrewer, I'd be like, oh, then it automatically it would. Yeah, but see, they wouldn't put that on there because like, he's, he probably drank before the game. <laughs> That's fine. It's the, it's the, <laughs> I mean, nothing to no, no like knock on the Texas Bowl, but it's just it's the Texas Bowl. Yeah. Everybody's well, you should already, have fun with it, right? Yeah. Everybody's already getting paid. Yeah. All the swag's been handed out. This is true. People are going to watch their team. It's fine. Yeah. But if you lose, eh. Yeah. You were still in the bowl you, game. Well, at least you had a really good time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's typically a team that's geographically close. It is a game. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's the uh, the talk right now is uh, depending on how the uh, Aggies and, and Longhorn seasons oh. end up, whether they would even accept Ooh. the game or if they're going to hold it off for another couple of years to build the suspense. Except what game? The, uh, the, they, they both ended up in the Texas Bowl because that was almost three, three or four years ago. Uh-huh. They almost Cotton Bowl. No, no, Cotton. the Texas like this oh, one. Okay. Yeah, the, the Cotton Bowl would be pretty epic. Well, too. and that's what that's what somebody one of my uh, buddies was saying is that you know you almost couldn't turn it down if it was the Cotton Bowl because it's because of location and yeah. history and everything else. You know, so if you had. Longhorns versus Aggies in the Cotton Bowl oh, the man. first time in ever how, how many years? It's, well, the first time they played, but they've yeah. never played each other in the Cotton Bowl. Mm. That's the OU been, thing. That's a yeah. Texas OU thing. Not, yeah. leave, leave A&M out of that. No, 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 no. The Cotton Bowl, the bowl. Not just playing at the state. Well, that's the the Red River shootout. Yeah. So, yeah and yeah, I will continue to call it the shootout. I don't care. Yeah, yeah I don't but, know. When did sure. they change? I don't know why they changed well, I mean, I know yeah, why they changed it. The, the whole gun thing. So yeah, they said Red River rivalry. Red River rivalry. That's impossible to say. Yeah, it is. You sound like somebody that would shoot somebody when you say that. <laughs> you sound like that guy from uh, the bridge, or no, the was it the bridge, the FX show about the I remember that. I remember El Paso that. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Juarez or whatever. It was. Yes, yes, yes. Dark. That was a dark show. <laughs> but anyway, no, the Cotton Bowl is always SEC, like the third, yeah, third place I, I, SEC I, I versus the yeah. third place Big Twelve. Sure. So they've always been the same conference, but now, can you imagine? Yeah. I can't believe they don't play. They they need to play that game every. Well, you know it's it, you know it's the people behind the scenes that are like, oh, we should, we should really build this up, mm-hmm. you know, and because they'll they'll do it again. But I think once it once it ended, they couldn't just start it back up a couple of years later. They had to let it. Yeah, summer. let it. Well, or and or build. fester. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, I mean, it's like any good fight. Like we just had the Conor McGregor Khabib fight. You know, and that was built up and had all the animosity. And then you had the after fight. Yes, the fight after the fight. Yeah. But really, how much did it build up for like, what, two weeks, three weeks? That's what? not much of That it wasn't as up. much as the Mayweather, honestly. No, well, there had been things going on in the background. Yeah. So if you keep up with the, the whole thing, like the, uh, the camps and everything, like that had started. Well, if you keep up with it, you know, because yeah. I, I honestly I don't, don't. But people yeah, in but, Texas and Texas a yeah. and they, they're they going to keep up with it. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're in the same neighborhood. Yes. You're right and next to each other. And yeah. it's got 100 years of history So already. whether, yeah, whether you like it or not, you know, your neighbor is talking about how their team won or lost or yeah. whatever. And, yeah, I mean, we have 
we have Aggies right across the street from us. And yes, I'm a Longhorn. Okay. I'm not either. I'm from Arkansas. I thought for some reason I was thinking you were College Station. Uh, nope. Yeah. No, nope. I probably would fit in better at, in College Station. You know the whole farm boy yeah, no. thing. But yeah. yeah, it was always funny. You know, I, I I thought about that for a long time when I was younger. I was like, yeah, you know, I would fit in better there. But no, I awesome. UT's awesome. Yeah. yeah, me too. I needed I needed that big different change. Maybe you know I did. I got I got family brother and sister both went there. So cool. she had a my brother in law played for Texas, but. I feel like Arkansas has a little more in, you know, in common, like the A&M approach, but not so much like not the annoying parts, <laughs> just the, they're, they're male cheerleaders, whatever. No, we don't male. I'm talking about just the kind of country bumpkin side. Yeah. Well, it was a, you know, we went to the, I got to go to the national championship between uh, UT and Alabama mm. and just walking around before the game, you know, when everybody's, Everybody's. Uh, that was back in what, 2005? Nine. 2005 is the year we beat USC. Yeah. And I was at that game too, which was amazing. Yeah. In, in yeah. Pasadena. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was there. Me and yeah. my brother. Yeah. Sweet. You were at that game? Yeah, I was. In 2005? No. Oh, in nine? No. Yeah. Alabama, yeah. yeah. Colt McCoy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. When he got injured and yeah. we lost. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was there too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, walking around before the game, it was, it was just really cool. You know, everybody was like, Everybody had accents, you know, a southern yeah. accent. And Everybody. Alabama yeah, accents, and everybody's yeah. just throwing beer around and having a good time. But, you know, that in contrast to the 2005 where it was all USC fans. Mm. And, that, I mean, that's the reason that USC and UT don't like each other to this day, I think. You know, because there's so many people there. And they. I've always heard that UT doesn't have the nicest fans ever. But I will tell you, USC has – they yeah, nobody holds a candle to them. They were so uppity and rude, and it's it's a completely just not fun. It's yeah. a completely different, uh, just a completely different way of life. Or, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not civilization. I don't know. It's just so like a different approach to everything. Yeah, like that very West true. Coast, like especially SoCal, Southern California, just like. You know, yeah, like, hey, bro, or whatever. Nice hair, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, nothing's a big deal except for, you know, we're all, and all you people are idiots, but they don't say it <laughs> out. You know, it's different than, like, the northeast uppity side of things, you know? It's a, it's a different flavor. That's like, the, that's like the old money uppity, Yeah, you know, with the northeast. The retire, and then you, the yeah, then you have the middle of the country that's all, you know, country bumpkins and, you know. Blue the, collar. Yeah, blue collar, and then and then you move out there, and it's like the vacationers. Yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah. With the in the USC fans, you're like, you know, name name your starting you know line, or even anybody other than just the quarterback and the running back. Hey man, your team sucks. That would be their response. They wouldn't. They, they probably couldn't. I tried to buy some of the USC national champion shirts yeah. at, like afterwards because uh-huh. they had them all set up already. Um, which was hilarious and they're like pulling them down i was like hey i I, i'd love to buy a shirt and they were like no and they're like jamming (laughs) stuff in boxes and there were people just throwing tickets out and stuff so i i didn't have a ticket to the game i paid a security guard to get in um (laughs) nice but i got a ticket and a a badge holder and like i pretty well like got all the stuff that i would have had i bought a ticket just because all the usc people were just chunking stuff they were so upset that's cool which i could understand being upset but they yeah it was a little bit a little bit more than that it was a crazy that was a great game like that 2005 game well they said instant classic yeah like and it it really was was, that was the peak of vince young's power yep and then he lost i'm not gonna say he lost his mind but you know, he didn't make that transition to the nfl very well no he got to him a little bit huh the money Something, yeah. yeah. I mean, just some people. Some people make it, and some people don't. I'd say it's like any, it's like any industry. Yeah. You know, somebody does well at one level, and then you they get promoted. Yeah. And then they just don't, they don't shine like they did at a lower level. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's of course, true. you're talking about like NFL, best of the best of the best, and you talk about uh, Manzel. Go back to Manzel. He was he was an extremely athletic guy in college that that got him by. Um, you know, and then he just didn't didn't pan out. Of course, it, you know there was some other stuff going on there. But when you look at it, it's like, yeah, you can only run around in circles for so long because <laughs> every year you get slower, but that defense doesn't get slower. Yeah. Those guys are not, you know, they get bigger actually. They get bigger and they get faster, mm-hmm. and you have got to figure out how to protect yourself from yeah. them. Mm-hmm. So he just didn't have the right style. 
And I, I'd say the same thing about Vince Young. He was a much more mobile guy that would rather, you know, tuck it and run with, mm-hmm. like, honestly, not the best arm. He just mm-hmm. he made some throws that he needed to. And uh, other than that, I mean, what do you do? Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like Tim Tebow. Yeah. Same thing. Now he's playing baseball. Is he still playing? He's still trying to think. Yeah, I think so. Still I just saw a, a, a thing where he's on the keto diet. He was on Dr. Oz. <laughs> That's the last <laughs> That's thing awesome. I saw about Tim Tebow. <laughs> Everything Tim Tebow yeah, does is good. Was well, he still doing the uh, the announcing stuff or like for the, SEC? Yeah, I don't know. He, I know Maybe. he was playing for the Mets, and I don't know. I didn't hear how he did organization. This. Well, oh, right, the, so the, he was like double A. Or but he was he was coming up like his first at bat. He hit a home run, and they're like, oh, well, that's, everybody's gonna go nuts. But he's it's a flash in the pan. But he just he kept yeah. he kept doing good. So I don't know if he plateaued and what. I don't know what the latest is on Tim Tebow. He hasn't been on this podcast in forever so <laughs> i don't know tim tebow if, i don't know if he, he probably didn't drink beer he might if he's on the keto diet Ke- well i don't know i don't know what a keto diet is yeah, just, I mean, honestly I, well, you can't drink i hear people talk about it but yeah probably the most annoying thing to hear people talk about it's it's up there <laughs> um i did it for a little while right up there with politics like yes. the most annoying thing you can hear I, people talk about i would rather hear people talk about politics because i've learned how to drown that out but the keto diet it's like my ear picks up on because i did it for a little while it's just an approach. It's like, you know, people figure out how to live on whatever's around them. That's just how people survive, right? But this was it's a high fat, moderate protein, like really, really low carbohydrate diet. And but you can't have Next. beer on it. Boo. It, listen, it's Boo. it's got its merits, you know. I and, talked to a talked to a personal trainer uh, a couple of years ago, you know, I was like, ah, I'm gonna get in some shape. Mm. And I was like, I eat pizza eight days a week and I drink beer and that's not gonna change. So I need to work out <laughs> to keep myself from gaining weight. Yeah. So don't tell me that I need to change my nutritional habits because it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Like it's just not. <laughs> so I will run or work out to offset that. Yeah. But that's how it works. Yeah. So what did he say? Or she? I, I don't want to. Uh, he was like, "Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're actually closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder what it was. So we're always uh, we're always closed on Tuesdays. Oh yeah. But I guess we forgot to lock the door. Yeah, Mike, you want to get that? Yeah. So no, no other. Yeah, he looked like he was coming in to figure out what he was going to brew. Yeah, maybe. Or know. use the restroom. Oh, did that happen? He was walking straight back there towards the restroom. Maybe. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We get a lot of uh, people that think we're a coffee shop. It okay. or like a sandwich shop or something. Yeah. If you had sandwiches. Well, I always I always thought about just putting like some some drip coffee next to the door, and when people come in, they're like, uh, "What kind of coffee do you have?" And you're like, uh, seven dollars for Folgers, right there." <laughs> you have any, you could do some nitro coffee. Yeah, or could. Something. Do you have a nitro setup? Uh, not on this fridge, but we do we do sell nitro setups. So we have nitro regulators and tanks and I stuff like that. I need to price some stuff out. I got that keys are just sitting there. It's just the the only the the bad thing about nitro is that it's a second system. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that you can really use from the from the CO2 part other than like the faucet, mm-hmm. you know, and it's that's the that's the big tipping point for most of it. And the nitro stuff typically costs just a little bit more than what CO2 stuff does. Yeah. So you got to really be into it to kind of justify. Yeah, I mean if you're drinking a lot of coffee or if you do cold brew at home, yeah. And you know, want to want to push it with nitro. I mean, a lot of people do that, but yeah, I like, I do. I like, uh, I like nitro coffee a lot, but I like my hot coffee too. Is he dancing? Maybe. Sometimes it, the mood I'm just hits sure. you. Yeah. Looks like he's doing the, or maybe he's like a, looks, looks like he's doing his, the truffle his shuffle. His back hurts or his leg hurts or he's, I mean, he's shuffling because he can't. He's doing the maybe truffle. Maybe he saw a friend that walked out of the post office or something. He's all maybe. excited. Yeah. People watching. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. You've yeah. never done it. Like a shower beer, Dude. you should try it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try it. I will report back <laughs> next time I see. You, I told you this is gonna be my uh, my new my new spot here. So you should do uh you should do a video of you doing a shower. No, beer. no video. Just waist up. Just uh, not even waist up. Like yeah, chest up. Chest up. Yeah, yeah. Catherine did one. She did. That was a, like one of the first things. Do you she really did. need to see me drinking yeah. a shower beer. Do it in slow mo. Are you not on a Houston Let's Chug craft beer? No. On Facebook, That's I'm great. not on that either. I don't. Oh know. yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, people just ch- uh, post chugging videos. So. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Houston Let's Chug Craft Beer. Houston Let's Chug. Because there's the Houston Let's Talk Craft Beer, which I feel like that one has um, waned a bit, and some of the others have picked up. Yeah. Some other well, Facebook that's groups. the that's how social media is in yeah. general, right? Yeah, they've definitely gained their own personality. I don't, 
I'm on too many of them to really, I'm not a, like a good contributor to any of them, even our own, like the interview stuff. And is he still shuffling? Oh, uh oh, I wonder what's going to go on. Is that out there by my car? <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. As long as in, he's fine. He does kind of have a rhythm to his, like he's always dancing. Yeah, I was going to say, it actually like, you know, watching him actually like puts a smile on my face. Yeah. Like, just like makes you happy. Dance, yeah. yeah. I wonder if he drives the same way he shuffles. I kind of hope not. <laughs> well, he's next to my car, so we'll yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, it's not a, it's not the most expensive car in the world, but it's mine. Yeah, it's yours. It's the only yeah, one I got. Like to keep, like take care of it. Yeah, fewer dents, better. Um, what were we talking about before the truffle shuffle and the oh, um, the Facebook groups. Oh yeah, I'm Houston, on, let's chug craft beer. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to join that one. I. It's just fun. I mean, it's just people like Facebook. Yeah. The last time I did a serious, serious chug, and this is years and years ago, but there was this chug challenge that was going around. It's a funny word. Yeah. Chug challenge. Well, it started Jason Pitts uh, in Austin. Uh, He was the first one and he challenged another friend of mine to do it. And then eventually I got, I got challenged and it was always like a one up thing. And so we Mm -hmm. were chugging like bombers and then the next person chugged a bigger bomber (laughs) and well, it came to me and they challenged me and this was the last challenge because I videoed myself chugging two Endeavor uh, bombers back to back. Wow. Boom, boom. Did somebody video you afterwards? Like just like. That was the thing. (laughs) I, I did it and video, videoed myself doing it. And I don't know what I did with the video. I might have, my wife might have. That's going to be the next group is the aftermath of Houston. Let's chug craft beer. It, it hit me so hard. Oh. It hit, I mean, like... I Great was, beer. Love the beer. But two not, of them, not back a, to back. Well, not a chuggable. Not, well, it is chuggable, obviously, in theory. Maybe one. One, but yeah, but they had already done a, a, a you know, one. But I was like, I'm going to... You got to one-up them. I'm going to double down, then I'm going to put a stamp on this thing. But I went and told Kelly and showed her the video, my wife, and she's like, you can't post this because this is awful. <laughs> And I sat there on the couch, and as she said, awful, everything kind of went, awful. <laughs> everything just, just kind of started circling around in my brain. And then, I, yeah, dude, it got, I just, and then it was you just. You were out the rest of the it, day. It was yeah. it. it. You were was like, it. I'm just going to lay down here on the couch. And, yeah, uh, that was a you know, dumb move. Yeah, and talk about, yeah, think about think about my actions. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I put myself in timeout. <laughs> and it was just, it was just dumb. I can't. Like, I look back to how I used to drink back in the day when I was a kid, you know, 20. When you could do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, when I was probably 21, 22, 23, I, I could drink two of those and then function later. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you'd be knocked out for a little while, but you wake up and you're like, okay, let's do Let's go out. Yeah. And now I'm out for a week. Yeah. I've never been able to <laughs> chug beer. I, 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 I just don't. I just, dude, never. I, well, uh, one, okay, it's, it's the macro beer that we used to drink back in the day, but it, it drank a bunch of it and just in a way different way. <laughs> like two beers and I'm, that's it. That's kinda, it was like a Mickey's? No. Forties? <laughs> he says a bomber. This is a 40. Oh, no, no, no. I mean. <laughs> or two bombers. You should have done a 40. We built. It was Ed, always, Edward 40 hands. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we built a funnel that was two stories high. It was made oh, with a tractor nice. funnel and the two big. Two stories? Yeah, you had to get up on the second story. And How do you even hold the pressure back of it like that? You just. You just they had a va- actually there was a valve. They went to the <laughs> tractor supply store and got the uh, the big funnel. Like a plastic valve. Yes. Yeah. And he just turned it and they're like, "All right, here we go." And then they would do like they'd make the big thing a punch and mm-hmm. with all the fruit and yeah. they'd dunk the fruit in there too. So you'd be drinking and then a big piece of fruit would come. It was like cuz it was that big <laughs> hit you in the face. You need a filter. Yeah. That's what we should have had. <laughs> what was that? Oh, yeah. mail? Yeah. You've got mail. Yeah. I, I find it funny that they deliver mail in there right next door. Yeah. Yeah. You have to pay somebody to bring that too, I bet. Yeah. That's our government hard at work. <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of uh, not anything related to this, but the second location. Oh, yeah. Katie yeah. is now a thing. That that wasn't a thing four years ago. No, definitely not. Definitely not. It wasn't even a thing four months ago. <laughs> April, April, May, June, July. Yeah, I guess it was just over four months, five months, six so months, however long it's been. Yeah. The takeover and the, the, the farm boy uh, putting your stamp on it, it's complete. Yeah, we still have a sign to put up, but we did uh, we did do the grand opening uh, a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I can't remember when that was. All these all these weekends run together these days, but yeah, we did the grand opening and got it up and going, and you know, stocked it full of tons of awesome homebrew gear and supplies, and you know, now we're just uh, you know, 
waiting for people to come in and check it out. That is the Katy location. Yep. We are at uh, Morton and Fry Road. Um, just just off of Fry Road on Morton. Yes. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, Hours are the same or different? Yeah, or? hours are exactly the same as here. Close I mean, on Tuesdays. essentially, yep, close on Tuesdays. Um, yeah, everything's exactly the same. We're we're about to fire up our um, educational classes out there. It's taken us a little while just to kind of get things planned out and figure out what's going on. But um, actually, tomorrow, Wednesday, we have a water chemistry class. Cool. And the water chemistry class is done by uh, Doc at Texas Leaguer down yeah. in uh, down in smart dude that richmond fort bend area down yeah. there uh but yeah he's he's done the class a couple times here and people have really loved it mm-hmm. and so we're doing the water chemistry class out there it's kind of our inaugural like hey come out and learn something cool about homebrew and this is where i make the joke of water can be somewhat of a dry topic but, oh uh, so dry let doc come in and he'll uh <laughs> <laughs> he'll, <laughs> It's like the the uh, water book right there. Yeah, man, that thing is it's a tough read. Dense, yeah, <laughs> dense, yeah. dense and dry. It's, it's Palmer, right? He wrote that. Uh, Palmer and uh, Zana Chef, I believe, they yeah. partnered up on it. Yeah, yeah. Palmer, he'll he'll, he'll admit it's a it's a tough. Uh, yeah, that's a tough read. I got through Kaminsky, Kaminsky yeah, and so it was uh, it was funny. I, I read through the first few pages and. I, I started out in chemical engineering, so I, I love chemistry, and I love the chemistry behind beer, but I read, I read the first few pages, and I stopped, and I sipped my beer, and then I started those few pages over again, <laughs> and when I got through them again, I was like, this is not, no, this is not going to work. Yeah. I was like, I'll just, uh, I'll just Google it. <laughs> I want to read it. I really do. I've got it. Now, the, hot, the problem is I read For the Love of Hops first. And that's Stan Hieronymus. And that guy's a yeah. writer. Yeah, definitely. And a storyteller. And it reads like a story almost. Yeah. And it's a it's a good read. Just to it's, eat. Yeah, it's a history and yes. yeah, everything. And I love it. It's a, it's a uh, Ken Burns of books. Yes. <laughs> I, I've not read Malt or Yeast because I went right to water. Thinking. Malt is good. Malt is uh, probably really similar to the way the hops uh, okay. hops book kind of goes, where it's the, a lot of the history behind it and mm-hmm. you know stuff like that. Uh, the yeast book, I've gotten part of the way through. I don't really remember that. It's been a while. But yeah, water was, I just remember like, basically just slamming my head against it hoping yeah. that something from the book would get in there um <laughs> you know by uh, by association I'll, you know. I'll wait until they make the movie yeah maybe book on tape <laughs> whoa that'd be so so dense you'd probably fall asleep <laughs> you're like hey i'm gonna drive to uh the woodlands yeah let's put on the water book you don't even remember <laughs> yeah you're like there. how did i get here <laughs> <laughs> it's like driving drunk, but yeah. driving, just your brain is. Well, when yeah. you get pulled over and uh, <laughs> the police officer is like, uh, "Sir, do you realize you know blah blah blah?" And you're like, "Have you listened to this? <laughs> <laughs> do you realize you were driving 32 and a 50?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I don't realize that, but I think that's that seems about right. Everything is moving really fast right now, <laughs> and things are spinning. Yeah, and I'm thirsty. I'm super thirsty. <laughs> I'm parched, absolute yeah. parched. Yeah. No, I need to. I need to read more. Actually. Uh, look behind the curtain. I've been talking to some of the authors about you know doing some uh, interviews. Like yeah. my previous uh, interview was with uh, Kimberly Bowker. She's uh, she's run done some articles on craftbeer.com. And that was a really fun show. But I've, uh, Fal Allen that did the uh, Goza book. I'm reading okay. that book currently and mm-hmm. in preparation for that one. And I talked to Randy Mosher and uh, Mitch Steele as well. They've all agreed to do interviews for the show. So oh, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Uh, two homebrews, homebrew cons ago. Uh, we were chilling with uh, Randy Mosier drinking a bottle of scotch. Yeah. And that was, uh, it was hilarious, you know, because uh, one of the guys that, that from Houston that went as well that I was rooming with, you know, through it, we're at an industry party because he's my employee, right? Um, or for the weekend, he's my employee, so he gets into the industry stuff. And so we, uh, we're sitting there, and he actually wins a bottle of scotch that, you know, from, from one of the suppliers. And they were like, yeah, it's, um, you know, kind of kind of a tradition to just go ahead and open it up and share it you know and they were like okay cool you know so he opens it up so we sat there and drank most of a bottle of scotch with randy Mosier and whoever else and like the next day you know we're walking around doing whatever and i was like oh yeah randy Mosier. you know you met him yesterday and he's like what are you talking about i was like it was the guy that was sitting like literally on your right hand side you know and y'all were y'all were talking he's like 
that was Randy Mosier. He's like, I sat next to Randy Mosier for like three hours and I had no idea. We didn't even talk about homebrew. <laughs> and I was like, that's probably why he kept talking to you. You know, like he's like, yeah, okay, cool. He's a cool guy. <laughs> cool guy yeah. yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I, I, I'm real excited. The fact that, uh, you know, a lot of these guys have agreed to do the show and like, I'm telling people that like, no way who's like not really nerdy into beer knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. But there's a few people like, dude, that's cool. So anyway, that's just a preview into. Did you talk to Beecham yet? No, Drew. He's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. What Should did you, you give him a shout? What did yeah. he write? Uh, so he's he does podcast stuff though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which which podcast? Uh oh crap! Put me on the spot. Mm-hmm. Um, is it Experimental Brewing? Okay. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, I think he's got he's got a couple of them. But okay. Yeah, he does that. But yeah, he's a, he's a fun guy. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. There's man. There's so many. It's 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 amazing to see now. Well, one, podcasting's funny because it most podcasts don't last very long. If you can get past ten episodes, you're like in the top, like seventy percent don't even make it to ten episodes. Um, That'd be like my podcast. If yeah. I did one, like it, podcast with Farm Boy. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's like wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's one. I, I, it would be a, a conceptually, it'd be a, a cool thing because I want to do some more like homebrew specific, and then like beer style specific shows and things like that but it just takes time and, and, and effort and scheduling and, and all that kind of stuff which you know i'm a little short on on time maybe i'll just make mike do it <laughs> ready do that i mean I he's so much time he's definitely not drinking beers in the shower so he's, obviously yeah. he's more productive than everybody <laughs> he doesn't do that he already did the party guile do we want to talk you should talk to landon about the party guile and what went wrong what just went wrong everything went wrong oh no I think it was approach initially. I think the, you didn't um, have a written out game plan. The barley wine though is, is, is not bad. The what? The barley wine? The barley wine. The what? first one. That's the, do you know the, the big one? Do you know the, the, the runnings off of it? Yeah. Do you know the ABV? I, got, I think I figured it as like eight point nine. Okay. Yeah, that's not. I yeah. mean, it's well, depending on how many pounds of grain. You yeah, know, that's, but that's I, I in the a, range. I had yet. a very variation of what they could be, what the lines were when I took the mm-hmm. measurements, mm-hmm. So and you were within that, within the range. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what I'm saying, like, what, what the, like, 7.2 to, like, 8.9. Okay. So. So you're at the high end of that range. Right. Oh, right, cool. Yeah. Right. So you got good efficiency. Yeah. Well, on that first one, but the second one, because it's supposed to be a two batch, you know, the party guy. The yeah, the party guy. Yeah. That one went down to the rats and the sewers. So. What was the, what was the gravity when you pulled it off? Which one? The, the second the one? The party guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Because sometimes you just have to, have to boil it down or a lot of people will, um, uh, Will blend with them, or or just use DME to bump it up. That's what I did. I yeah. did use that for that for that first one. Mm-hmm. But then I didn't leave myself any, or I didn't buy any extra, have any extra for the second one because the second one was like the hydrometer didn't even do anything. It was like up here, and it should have been down here. So it was like not even no alcohol. Oh, no sugar in it. No yeah. sugar. Yeah. Well, so. you were really really efficient through the first one. So that might have been part of it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. So what you did instead of really like a classic party guy, you just made a good barley wine. When's that gonna be ready? Oh, it's ready now. It's on tap. Okay, sweet. I, yeah. I have some. Yeah, I think I need to crank the uh, my CO two up on it a little bit. It's, yeah, the, the higher the down. ABV, the tougher it is to get carbonated. It's just more. So I, I, need, like to, I need to. I need to crank up the well, ABV. What? You can. I mean, you don't have to. I was gonna say, what is it? More English or, or it's American? like personal profile? Yeah. 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 Is it more? What type of hops did you use? I, uh, I have it re- all written down. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, you know, English or American? You don't remember? I'd have to look. I have, like I said, I have it all written down. Okay. Oh, wow. And then I got that ESB. How's that? Um, it's still in bottles. It's bottle conditioning right now. Okay. Oh, are y'all gonna go to uh, November Fest? When is that? What? I huh? just, I just November Fest. When is that? Yeah, it's uh, it order. is in November. Yeah, um, it is done through CCSD, CCSD, which is the Connoisseurs Club of Smoking and Drinking. Yeah, I'm um, intrigued already. Go ahead. Yeah, they're they're a cool group that's kind Black of and mild. I guess kind of based in the Heights area. I mean, yeah. this area. Um, they've been around for a long time. I, I can't even tell you how many years they've been around, but they've been doing no, November Fest for a very long time um and that's kind of their signature event yeah so it's all homebrew so they split up in teams and then each team is responsible for basically brewing beer Mm -hmm. um and then you know they you you give them a donation to the club uh, and they have a concert 
Um, oh, you know, cool. so they have music going on and they have food and everything else. So a donation to the club, I guess, gets you uh, a ticket to the concert and food, and then they have the beer there, and then they do competition between the clubs. Oh, cool. But these guys have like, uh, you know, they set up booths and they have like uh, tasting, you know, bars set up and they have lights. It's, it's just really cool. They 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 go a long way to make it fun, um, and they've opened it up. So last year they opened it up to a couple of other clubs. It was usually just CCSD, and so they opened it up to the Brewers of the Hood, which is our club here, mm-hmm. and then also the Foam Rangers. And the Foam Rangers showed up, and the Brewers of the Hood did not. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, just a lot of other stuff. But this year we're going to be rolling out in force, so we've already got, I think, 100 gallons uh that's being brewed for that event specifically. That's all homebrew. So everything there is homebrew. Where is it? It's at Caddy Corner. Where is that? It's right here on 34th. Oh, okay. 34th and Alba, is it, right there? Yeah, it's it's like right in the middle of the uh, Garden Oaks neighborhood. November right there. what? Um, what's up? Do you know November. The Let me look real quick. Second, like, second weekend? I think like 13th so. 13th or something? Yeah, it's like 13th or, no. or 17th maybe. 10th, 17th, 20, not the 24th. That would be after yeah. Thanksgiving. Let's see. Events. Uh, November 10th. Okay. At 2 p.m. Uh, it goes pretty much all night. But, okay. yeah, they're, uh, they're a cool group of guys, and it's a good event. They use the, the funds for their clubhouse. You know, they, they have a, a, a rental space that they meet at, uh, but they do lounge formal um, it's kind of their prom other <laughs> event, which is hilarious. Um, so everybody gets like decked out in the night, like to the max and yeah. goes to prom, you know, That's cool. but it's just a whole bunch of guys that they actually meet weekly. Um, they meet once a week and at their clubhouse and I thought about yeah. starting a, a beer centric social society in my neighborhood. You're not going to get a better name than that though. No. Connoisseurs club of smoking and drinking. No, That's I was going to call it uh, hilarious. badass beer and ale drinkers appreciation social social society is that it beer beer and ale drinkers uh that's pretty close was it beer and ale you could misspell it if you needed to beer and ale drinkers appreciation social society badass that works yeah badass badass. similar to these guys yeah but yeah so that one's that one's pretty cool but yeah we've got like I said, they usually do like uh, brats and, you know, just like a whole table full of food. Uh, you get a cup and you can go around and try everybody's home brews. Or everybody's home brews. And if you don't really like home brew, then you can go into Caddy Corner and <laughs> and buy a beer there and sit there and drink. But yeah, yeah, it's more fun in there. It's like they're, it's like the place right next to Caddy Corner. It's not like really in Caddy Corner, but yeah. whatever it is. That's but, cool. Yep. No, it's, it's a lot of fun. We, we have a good time. I've been the last, uh, last few years. And uh, I wasn't able to go last year because of football, and I won't be there this year because of football. But my beer will be there, so oh, cool. We'll uh, we'll send send a few gallons that that direction. Cool. But. All right. Well, uh, fourth anniversary party this weekend. Definitely Satur- Saturday the twentieth. Uh, twentieth. That's right. Yeah. Saturday the twentieth. So you can come here, and then after the party here, if you want to head up to Spring to uh, Thistle Draft Shop. They're having oh, an indoor. forgot about that one, too. I'll yeah. be there as, for that one as well. I'm going to try to swing by here and then go up there. So uh, Huey's. Are you familiar with Huey's right here? Mm-hmm. Um, they are actually hosting our official after party. Oh, cool. Uh, because it's their anniversary, too. Nice. And it just happens to start at 4 o'clock. Um, so stay here till 3 and then go over there Cozy at over. 4, you know, or, yeah. or go up to spring. Yeah. It's, um, man, it's there's so ways, many events yeah. going on right now. I was yeah. going to say, there's, that's the awesome thing about Houston. Wherever you're at, there's something going on. Every, and this is the time of year, man. It's no, it's no longer – you're not going to sweat, probably. There may maybe, be. Yeah, maybe. You never know. Yeah. Depends on the activity. Uh, All right. Uh, Mike, next, uh, next homebrew that you're going to do. Uh, I'm looking at a, uh, a milk – I think it was a milk coffee stout. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That's I got, uh, still yeah. in the planning? Yeah. Yeah. I've got, uh, I'm starting to get a recipe down for it, but um, yeah, it's a uh, milk coffee stout. Yeah. Okay. It is. Nice. I don't I mean, He's trying to use some of the grains that I, I got already, but uh, I'll be back to get the uh, final finishing touches. We'll I'm, be here. I meant to bring my CO2 tank today. Oh, yeah. You oh. Said that. I was going to bring it and get it refilled, and uh, I've whiffed. I whiffed on that. I'll just have you to don't have back. two CO2 tanks? No. 
I got two rookie. propane tanks, but I don't have I don't have two. CO2 I want to get tanks. a big like fifty uh, pound like CO two tank. Do you have the space for it? I do. Yeah. Right behind my. It'll last like fifteen years. Yeah, that's what there's I'm a lot of CO two in those. I yeah, that's my that's my way of helping the environment. I pull it out of the air, put it in my tank, and then put it in my beer. Yeah, but then you drink it and then release it back into the air, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's the way that? that's the way God intended it. Yeah. So who might argue with that? I don't. I don't know a lot about science and all that kind of stuff, but that's the way the the good Lord meant it to be. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yes. Yep. Yes, it yeah. is. I I need. I haven't brewed in a while. Last thing I made was a cider. I like ciders are cool because they don't take a lot of time up front. Oh, uh, did I tell you about the cider that we had at Homebrewcon? No. Oh, it was a twenty-two percent. Whoa! 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 whoa. Five-year barrel-aged apple cider. Five from, years from Schilling Schilling Cider Company. Can that be considered cider? Or is that more like an apple? I wine? don't care. It was delicious. <laughs> it was, was it still or freaking delicious. Was it still or, or carbonated? Uh, this one was carbonated. Yeah, just well, it was no. Actually, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. It was still. Yeah, but I mean, it's so viscous. I they probably couldn't carbonate it yeah. anyway. <laughs> but no, it was. Uh, it was beautiful. It yeah. was. It was like. It was amazing. How did they? Did they add anything to it? Like, uh, I didn't get to talk to the brewers, oh. and they said it was actually one of the first things that they that they made and threw into a barrel, mm. like obviously five years ago, like when they first opened. Yeah. Um, but it was it was amazing. Yeah. What kind of barrel was it? Uh, it was a bourbon barrel. Bourbon barrel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, si- man. I I feel like that changed my outlook on ciders. Cider has. I so- mean. I know ciders, right? You know, mm-hmm. cider, like regular drinking cider. But this one, I was like, wow, I never thought that that could taste like that. Yeah. It was just so much, so different. Yeah. There is so good. Cider has, there's a lot of things you can do with cider. And people don't realize that. Yeah. People just think of, uh, oh, cider, it's sweet. Yeah, no. Nah. But no, if you're in the South, yes, yeah, sweet. But once you go up North or to Europe, it's all dry and yeah. they're delicious and yeah so many different varieties and then you you get you can get into like cold distilling which i guess technically is illegal i don't i don't yes, know yes it, it is yeah which is silly yeah that's yeah, weird because you can just do it by accident yeah oh it got cold outside oops, yeah. oops. i just broke the law i just happened to turn this jug over uh, another <laughs> jar and it melted but it it's a high alcohol now yeah <laughs> i try i know a guy that tried it once it didn't turn out the. It was a little, uh, a little harsh. Talk to the guys in the sticks. They know how to do it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we actually sell a uh, cider base here. I don't mm-hmm. know if you realize that, but it's a high quality. Uh, so it's a bag in a box. Mm-hmm. And it's five gallons of cider base, mm-hmm. um, and it dilutes down four to one. So it makes twenty gallons. Oh wow! Total. You don't have to use it all at once, obviously. But yeah. It's a very high quality um, cider or uh, apple juice concentrate from uh, Pacific Northwest. Okay. Um, wow. And it's like, eh, what do we sell? It's like 150 bucks for five gallons, which seems like a lot mm-hmm. but when you think it makes 20 gallons. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you're like, oh, hey, that's a lot cheaper than, you know, just buying a jug of apple juice. And then you could add, you could make like, if you wanted to do just straight cider and add, you could do different yeast with each one, like ale yeast and oh yes. Yeah. The champagne yeah. yeast or whatever. I've even heard say, like saison yeah. yeast and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Or you could do, you know, add, you know, different fruit flavors to each one. Yeah. Or It is the fall. It is the fall. Yeah. I mean, it is uh, cider season, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Harvest season. Yeah. Have you ever done like an ice cider? I haven't. No. Yeah. I want I, I do find it interesting though. Like I have some uh, friends that own homebrew shops up north, guys that I've met from through homebrew con. Mm-hmm. And uh, during uh, cider season, you know, they have such a big you know, wave of people that one of them actually bought a cider press Mm -hmm. and he'll actually go out and, uh, people will pay him to pick the apples off the trees or, or he'll just take them for free because they'll say, Hey, here's apples. And so he'll press them and then sell the juice (laughs) and whatever else. Like he's got the, 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 uh, grinder, uh, masher and, and then he presses it out. Um, but then he'll charge, you know, so people can bring in their own apples and he'll charge X amount so that they can, uh, run them through the, uh, the mill and then, and then press the juice out of it themselves, cool. you know. And I was like, that's a, that's an awesome, like, you know, revenue stream, yeah. you know, for a business. And then also maple, uh, 
maple syrup uh-huh. you know when the maple trees start to sap they he, he sells like spiles and all kinds of other stuff like maple tree yeah harvest stuff and i was like it's not something that you just you, you don't get that in the south no what do we have like strawberries that's about it peaches yeah <laughs> no apples there's only no. like two varieties that'll grow around here and i don't think i didn't know good. any of them would yeah. barely barely yeah it's like crab apple yeah something weird yeah there's yeah. like two and then they yeah, taste like blackberries you can do black tastes like cigarette butts something, something like yeah that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> with a hint of like urinal cake yeah mm. just a little bit <laughs> urinal <Yeah>. cake. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i feel like we should do a full cider episode Ooh, that'd be fun you want to yeah i said that maybe we should talk to like houston cider co yeah 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 let's do that uh, we're gonna set that up right when do you want to do that i'm down whenever maybe okay maybe yeah. in november or something I feel like cider and, and Thanksgiving meal could go really, really well together. I could see that. Yeah. I feel like maybe the Pilgrims had cider. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to say they did. Somebody had some. Somebody, Somebody yeah. had some cider back in the day. Somebody did. Yeah. yeah. Somebody was smart enough to go, hmm, that, that ferments. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're I'm going to stir it with my magic uh, stirring spoon, yeah. and it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into alcohol. Yep. Because God wanted it that way. Yep. Who am I to question? All right. Well, we'll wrap there because, uh, man, we've been talking for a while. And it's almost time for that fourth anniversary party. If you're listening to this on Saturday, I hope you're on your way. Yep. Uh, if you're listening to this after Saturday, of course, Farm Boy Homebrew Shop is open, you know, six days a week. Six days. Six yeah. days a week. Closed six on days. Tuesdays, but every other day. Uh, two great locations here on Shepherd, the OG. Or now the new Katie location there on uh, Fry and Morton. Morton. Yep. And uh, if you uh, if you forget our billboard on I ten in Brookshire, we'll tell you. Oh, cool! Go. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's so kind of cool. Yeah. West of town, billboard. coming this way yeah. in Brookshire. We always like to shout out. I was like, "Hey, I saw your billboard." <laughs> nice. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't know who sees it. <laughs> and uh, don't forget, uh, soon, very soon, your official home, only place in this within uh, the region, a lot of miles, five hundred yeah. miles, five maybe more, probably more. Yeah, five hundred miles sometimes doesn't get you out of sight of Texas. Really, that's true. You know? yeah. Um, I know oh, if you're going does, probably a thousand if you're going west coast up to Michigan it might be a thousand I'm yeah. going to say within a thousand miles yeah um, you're going to have to listen to that proclaimer song walk a thousand miles to come get yourself some spike brewing uh, equipment would walk 500 yes coming soon you can come put your hands on it feel yeah. it touch it press the flesh just you know just you know feel it feel it feel it I, I would charge you if you wanted to lick it mm, he's got to see you if you, you can probably do it under <laughs> A stainless steel, it cleans up nicely, even yeah. for many tongue marks. It's fine. Yeah. Mike was already thinking. Or tears, because it's just so so beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. But yeah, that's Spike Brewing. So official uh, retail location here at the farm. Will it be just here or also at the... Only here. Okay. Yeah, for now. Yeah, we'll... Uh We'll uh, keep it keep it in the in the OG for now. But uh, for the people out in Katy, if you would like one, mm-hmm. they'll be on our website, and we will happily take one out to you. Awesome! Yeah. All right, so again, two great locations: Farm Boy Brew Shop, uh, one of the one of the the in the past four years, one of the greatest homebrew stores in the world. Oh, nope. definitely up there, top. I, I don't know, it's up there. I've not looked at all the homebrew stores. I don't know where you rank. I'm sure it's like top five. I'm sure there's, I mean, we're, there's like 2,500 in the U.S., so probably like 2,000 and something. For sure. (laughs) Or more. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, for Landon, and again, happy fourth. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me. For TD Mike, um, we're going to work on that that party gal setup. And uh, And the shower beers. And the shower beers. And uh, my name is Josh, and we appreciate you listening to this episode of the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Interbrews. Tell a friend and uh, come celebrate the anniversary and just buy a beer for somebody and enjoy uh, all that uh, Texas and Houston craft beer have to offer. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This is Interbrews. The preceding has been a presentation of Stewed Productions.